Coming up next on This Week in Google, Leo's out for the week. So I, Jason Howell, am filling in for Leo. We're here with Jeff Jarvis, Stacey Higginbotham, and Ant Pruitt. And we got a whole lot of Google to talk about this week. Google is the ultimate warrior in the battle between Google and Oracle. We talk all about that case and the Supreme Court decision that decided it. Uh, Google I.O. 2021 is near. Suddenly we know all about it. We've got details for you. Stacey reviews the uh, Nest Hub Two, that's the one with sleep tracking. I go hands-on with the OnePlus Watch, the, their new wearable that's coming out soon. Uh, the Pixel 6 is uh, supposedly going to have Google's Whitechapel chip in it, and so much more that we talk about next on This Week in Google. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 606, recorded on Wednesday, April 7th, 2021. 22222 to lose. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by Melissa. Like expired milk, 30% of your customers' data goes bad every year. That's money down the drain. Visit Melissa's developer portal for free access to data quality APIs, demos, and code samples. Freshen up your sour data today with 1,000 records cleaned for free at melissa.com slash twit. And by Cashfly. Give your users the seamless online experience they want. Power your site or app with Cashfly CDN and be 30% faster than the competition. Learn more at twit.cashfly.com. It's time for This Week in Google. Hello, everyone. I'm Jason Howell filling in for Leo Laporte. Uh, I like to say that he's gallivanting, but I think he's gallivanting in the Petaluma area, or at least the Sonoma County area. Still gallivanting. He's probably doing it in a gallivanting sort of way, but uh, happy that he's taking a break and enjoying himself and uh, happy that it means that I get to join the crew today. So I'm happy to be here. Yay. Joining us as always, uh, we'll start with you, Jeff Jarvis, buzzmachine.com, or I can go for the super long, the Leonard Tau professor for journalistic innovation at the Craig Newmark Graduate School. Newmark, of Craig City. Newmark, <laughs> Newmark. University of New York. I knew that was coming and I didn't do it. Why didn't I sing it? How you doing, Jeff? All right, how are you? Glad to have you here, boss. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's good to be here. Also joining us and returning after a week away is Stacy Higginbotham, uh, Stacy on IoT.com. What's up, Stacy? What's up? What's I'm up? in a good mood today. I can't wait. I know. I know. I'm loving it. It's like it's like lifting the collective energy, too. That's, That's what happens when one of us. Yeah. So it's good to see you. Good to have you back. And then also joining us from, uh, well, nearer to me in real life than anyone else yeah. on this on this podcast panel is Ant Pruitt, uh, twit.tv slash hop and all other things twit. How you doing, Ant? Unbelievable as always, sir. How about yourself? I knew you, were, I knew you were gonna say that. And then I knew you were gonna <laughs> wink. That's, that's like your thing. You do unbelievable as always, and then you wink. It just makes me feel so good. It's good to see you. I'm doing well. <laughs> It's good to be here, and we've got uh, we've got some Google stuff, actually. Yeah, in the actual news. actual Google news, actual Google news that we can talk some about today. Big news. And, but but you know, kind of scrolling through, we might end up talking a little bit about Facebook. I'm sorry, Stacy. I, I don't know. It's okay. You know, it I, might I, happen. I will, I will persevere. You mood. cannot kill. You my bringing mood. her down. <laughs> sorry, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to bum you out. But don't harsh my buzz, man. Don't, yeah, don't don't want to harsh your mellow. Um, we, I suppose we should start with the story that I only realized when I was kind of setting up the doc for today's show. I completely forgot to put this into last night's rundown on all about Android. Uh, totally an Android story, sort of, I suppose, at this point, yeah. but definitely a, a story that's been in the Android world for more than 10 years. Google uh, <laughs> has won officially in the Supreme Court uh, yeah. in its case against <laughs> Oracle. Uh, this is the case that had to do with copyright claims. Oracle was claiming, you know, Oracle stated and, sh and proved that Google had Java code in the Android operating system code uh, a decade ago, like I said. Google, of course, claiming fair use. Um, Supreme Court ultimately sided with Google on this, uh, reversed an earlier appeals court decision that Oracle had won in its favor, I think two times. So this is just one of those cases that just like, never goes away. We talk about it for a little bit. 
then we forget about it. And then like four or five or six months later, it appears again and it's appeared again. Is this the end of this story? Are we at the end of this arc? Yes, because the only yes. thing you can do after the Supreme Court rules is take your toys and go home. And okay. Google is basically, the, we'll have some petty fighting maybe back and yeah. forth, like Google being like, yeah, Oracle, you know what? We're no longer using your software. But really, this was such a huge news. Like Monday morning, I woke up. I was stoked because it was after Easter and I was probably still on a sugar high. And I saw this and I was like, oh, this is amazing. And my husband thought it was actually going to be exciting. And I tried to explain to him how not copywriting APIs basically enables the entire service oriented like tech economy that we have today to exist. And he was well, just like, Stacy, it is copyrighted. They didn't okay, decide yes. copyright. They decided fair use. Right. Fair use. You're right. Thank you, Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Uh, you'll never hear that again, by the way. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you're in such a good mood. I'm like, yes, Jeff, you're wow. right. Wow. <laughs> you're right. Wow. It is copyrighted, but it's fair use. You can do this. But this is huge for like- It is huge. The way we work today. I mean, think about it. Like just I as an IoT person, every item in my smart home uses APIs to talk to other things. You have to have access to these things. And this lets you control them, but it also lets people use them, which without like onerous terms. So you can't have Oracle step it in the middle of innovation and saying, whoop, whoop, pay, my, pay my toll. So I'm pay excited. me. You got a lot. Yeah. And I think hey, uh, uh, the other thing that makes me happy about it is um, because th they did kind of dodge copyright and we'll get back to whether software can be copyrighted later as of now it can be. But I think that, I think that they use that open for a fight for another day, which probably mm. could be good news. But just as a creative, as we all are here, it also is a, an endorsement of fair use. And that's important for all of us. That's important for, yep. you know, you showing videos yeah. on these shows or for us uh, acting as critics of things. Um, it, it recognizes the the core of copyright, which is that it's meant to spur creativity. So the the, the strong endorsement of fair use, which Larry Lessig once said, fair use is just the right to hire lawyers. Um, uh, you know, it's still not, it's never going to be clearly defined, but there's an endorsement of it here. And that made me feel good. And finally, it feels really good to see Oracle as a jerk company getting kicked. <laughs> Mm. Jason, you asked if we were going to hear about this again. It seems like we only heard about it when it was about vacation time for, uh, for what's his name, McAfee. <laughs> but this was, uh, I thought this was, was good news because um, I talked to a, a employee at Google and he brought up, I'm not going to say his name, but he brought up some good points and said that, yeah, there were a lot of things brought up in this documentation that, made it look bad on Google, but this is still just for the better of everybody. And, and like you said, far as fair use and being able to use certain things in our content creation as we are content creators. And mm. I believe Miss Stacy mentioned, Mrs. Stacy mentioned something regarding, you know, hey, we can be petty with Oracle. I think they've already started that because they're going to step away from um, a particular accounting software or something and move over to SAP. Yes. I want to say I saw that yeah. the other day. Yep, they're they getting are. rid of Oracle. Just, yeah, okay, we were nice to you while this went on, but yeah, <laughs> be gone, Oracle, be gone. No one likes Oracle. SAP. I mean, find me someone who likes, even my friends who work at Oracle don't like Oracle. That's <laughs> wow. Ouch. It's hard. Ouch. Your friends are all hiding right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> there are two Oracle, good probably. threads in here, Jason, that I thought were really yeah. good. One by AMAC, uh, Alex McElroy. Um, yeah. Who, who, you know, I think one thing we, we owe some thanks to Google in this case is everybody wants to slam the big platforms. Google spent God knows how much and spent 10 years fighting on behalf of all of us in favor of this fair use. And AMAC says that it was 10 years ago when he was part of the team of lawyers who was privileged to work on number one, book searches fair use, number two, DMCA protects YouTube, and number three, Android's use of Java APs is fair use. And, and that they they fought these things and good for them. They I, didn't I, fight I, them out of the goodness of their heart, though, Jeff. No, I mean, but they could have they... given up. <laughs> like like I think folks are lately, and 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 you know against Murdoch in Australia, I think they're they're less likely to defend the internet as well because they're because they did start they this back in the do not be evil era. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, this was a 2013, Mm. 2012, I think. The appeals case was 2014, so they started the case before then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a full decade ago. This this has been one of those 10 year cases. Uh, <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. The other really interesting thread here was and I'm pulling yeah. up here Matt Schroyer's um, about the notion of interoperability, and that there was a flip here. Um, let me see if I get this right. That the active supporters were. Oracle and Sun, and Microsoft was, eh, I don't know so much because, uh, you know, I don't want you to be interoperable with us like Oracle was with Java. And and that interoperability won here, which is really important too. Just Stacy can put that better than I can. I had to stop listening to you because I was being talked to by John. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yes. Inter- interoperability, Stacy. <laughs> like it or don't. Good or bad? Oh, pro interoperability. Always. Okay, there we yeah. go. <laughs> it's like, do you appreciate kicking puppies? No. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. So Oracle, Oracle, when it was down, had been in favor of interoperability. Then it turned and went against it. Yeah. Um, but in the end, it, it, it won and, and Oracle lost. It was on the wrong side of history. Oracle said, uh, in response to this, they said, they stole Java and spent a decade <laughs> litigating as only a monopolist can. This behavior is exactly mm. why regulatory authorities around the world and in the United States are examining Google's business practices. Mm. So, yeah, take that, Google. Yeah. Bitter, bitter, bitter. A little bitter. I mean, you, you, spend a, you spend a decade fighting for your side and you lose. You're going to be a little bitter. I have a feeling anybody would come out the other end and be like, yeah. Yeah, that's how I felt about net neutrality in 2018 or 2017. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't worry. It's coming back. It came back around. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That that arc is turning uh, for the better again. So there we go. Cool. Google wins. Uh, happy, uh, happy to get that on one of the shows. I don't know how I missed it last night. We had all sorts of other great, you know, like important Cause, news. Because because you're probably trained to say, oh, the Google Oracle story. Oh God, it's still going on. You know, I, honestly, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're probably right. That's what it is. Be- yeah, yeah, you're probably yeah. exactly right. Because when I saw this headline, I was like, oh my goodness, I, how many times has this story come up, and I have to like um, kind of rehash it again and go through the, the you know, all the twists right. and turns and. Is it's important? Plus, Jason, I didn't see Twitter go berserk the way I thought they would have. I, I thought Twitter no, would go Twitter, crazy with this. Twitter went nuts on my feed, but I have the cloud feed. You saw it? Oh, I, my Twitter didn't so much. My Twitter was mine like, was absolutely quiet. Heck yeah, <laughs> APIs. There's there's the differences. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, she's all yeah. IoT. I'm on infrastructure Twitter. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm in the regular people Twitter. It's always infrastructure week for Stacy. That's yes, right. Yes, indeed. Isn't it for all of us? Uh, I'm sure if your Twitter went nuts over that news, then are they going nuts over Google I.O. 2021? We actually have information. And it's Woo-hoo. no, it's not an in-person Yay. Google I.O. So... It's virtual, which I mean, we kind of expect, right? Like at this point, yeah. like you yeah. know, it's yeah. what is it next? At least month, we're having one. Last year virtual. there was none. Exactly right. Last year it didn't even happen. They had planned to have it, and then you know you can cite a number of reasons why it didn't happen. You know, there was a lot of social unrest happening at that point. I think this. Was, I think that was like post, like almost immediately post uh, the George Floyd. Um, incident, right? Uh, somewhere around there where Google was yeah, like, May 25, oh, as we now know, Maybe was George Floyd. Yeah, it was that. It was pandemic. It was yep. a number of things. And they were like, yeah, maybe it's, maybe having a celebratory uh, conference at this point is is not a good idea. So they postponed it uh, indefinitely. So we're getting it May 18th through the 20th. It's going to be virtual, free to attend, uh, of course. I mean, I'd be surprised, I suppose, if it wasn't. Uh, but, uh, but free, free for everyone. everyone. Yeah. Everyone can go this year. Everyone. Yeah. You can all go to the virtual Shoreline Amphitheater (laughs) (laughs) online. Bring your sunscreen. Yeah. We're going to take a drive down there, even though it's virtual. (laughs) I don't know. There there might be a handful of other people that show up. They're like, what? Google I.O. is happening right now. Where is it? I feel like y'all could do. This is a great opportunity for a Twig branded background. Go out there. Take a photo of the amphitheater so people can set it as their virtual backgrounds. So you can. There you go. Zoom. 
Brilliant. Hey, yeah. that's a great uh, idea. I <laughs> love it. They're going to have a consumer and developer keynotes. So, you know, talking oh. products, talking features, uh, sounds like the, you know, the general um, idea is, is very similar to what you get out of a normal Google I.O. just compressed into uh, three days. Although three days is about what it normally is anyways, right? When it's, yep. when it's out of short. Yeah, it is. Three or four yeah. days. Yeah. Four days maybe yeah. at the longest. So... Yeah, I'm curious to see how they'll do the actual opening keynote because uh, you know that's going to be pre-recorded. It, there's no way, and you see what yeah. Apple and Microsoft have done with those opportunities to try to really, really make them in depth and and captivating to the audience, and not just really bore you to death with a bunch of slides. So I'm curious to see what Google would do with its googliness to make this an interesting, uh, interesting presentation. You know what I would yeah. love to see. Let's just let's, let me just dream big for a second here. So I have a I have Google audio Nest audios. I have Google dis, or Nest displays. I've got my Pixel. I feel like how fun would it be to like be able to tune in on a couple of these channels and have like like I don't know different camera angles or different things kind of happening. Wouldn't that yeah. be fun? And yeah, Google is the cool. type of company would who would think like that. I think that would be yeah. cool. So right. I am sure they're not going to, but like, oh, my Nest audios, I could have them behind me and they could be like crowd noises or <laughs> <laughs> can <laughs> yeah. and <laughs> okay. yeah. that's, that's well, just So, so excited. what's your wish for IO? What, what do you want out of IO? What do you want them to announce? I would like, actually, I'll, I'll go for, I'll go first. Go for it. Uh, go for it. I would like Please. Google to talk about smaller machine learning chips. So bringing actual machine learning to the, their TensorFlow, their TPUs are big, right? They've got TensorFlow Lite. I think it could be smaller and better. So I would like for them to make some big waves there um, and make it easier for normal people to use and maybe train on. That would be really neat if you could train your- Maybe own, what? Like train, oh, train. on. Oh. So like yeah. imagine if I could do NLP, like I could train my devices for my voice or my- wake words that's Ooh, something that's yeah. within grasp actually from a technical perspective um, and then the other thing i really would like is much more information about local uh, processing and if i'm thinking super google nerdy i want something on the distributed side so like how we can actually start getting even if it's on their database side so it's on their side but eventually it could come to us is getting devices to really share computing loads across networks in a way that um, is a little bit more flexible than it is today. Like you don't Give have me an to example. program at Corpus. So like, this is a crazy example, but like my, my phone and my Google displays might decide amongst themselves which one will do the processing for uh, hearing oh. my voice. That's, that's a really easy one. I like that, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. But it could but also be like- processing for it. Yeah, it could also be like Stacy really does these. Like, I need to borrow some compute power for some machine learning to do some hyper personalization for Stacy's house. Uh, let's, you know, in the middle of the night, no one's using these displays, and she's not using her phone. Let's combine all that compute power to do some quick training, and then poof, the next morning I wake up and That's I've got cool. better stuff. That's we're getting there. Your like, own I have, Stacy neural network. Yeah, Your it's personal like, neural network. People are already like. There have been companies that have put like Erlang, which is a highly distributed programming language, on like light switches so they can do that within the walls of the house at various times, right? But we wow. really need someone to take that sort of thing mainstream. And that's, I don't think that's going to happen, but it'd be really awesome if it did. Still trying to understand. You know what I want. So, so take, the, take the light switch as the example, because that already exists. What, mm -hmm. um, like, wh what does that result in? Like so it could learn things, it could learn like, okay, there's, and there, there's different layers. So if it's only light switches, maybe it just learns exactly, it does, it learns exactly what someone's schedule is, right? Oh, I but see, I see, okay. The other, like the next layer is once these things start, once there are common frameworks for things to talk to each other, it actually could talk to my phone and let's use the phone as a proxy for me even though it may not be because I may not carry it with me. But if you use my mm -hmm. phone as a proxy for me, then you have this additional piece of information that says, hey, Stacy's right here. Take action on this. And um, uh. so it, it's it's 
pulling in more data to learn from and possibly react. And, and you can do a lot of this you can do. It just happens like over periods of weeks as opposed to every day. Um, right. And in like, like an ongoing kind of. Process. Yeah. And a lot of companies yeah. say things like, oh, we do personalized machine learning, but they really don't. They have a cookie cutter base. Well, they, they say they, they're, they're really just doing machine learning across all of their customers. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, they process it every like two weeks or a month. And then they're like, they do a software update to everyone. That's like, Hey, we're better now because it, and that's not bad. I mean, that'll be things like, Hey, we recognize dogs now on our cameras because we've trained on everybody's dog, but how much cooler could it be if it were, if you had that computing power that they could use locally to be like, a, your stuff isn't going to the cloud, but B, we recognize your dog. So when that right. raccoon runs into your dog door, we're going to be like, holy cow, Stacy, there's a raccoon in your house. Gotcha. Right. This is a fear of actual mine. Actual personalization. Not, right. Yeah. yeah not marketing lot, personalization. Lot right. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's biscuit at your door, not Kylo. That's yeah. <laughs> for, for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So you know what, what I, I want? Looking forward to, but Jeff. Yeah, what do you, you I want to hear what you want? You, you know what I, I'm no, I, I don't Mine's know. obvious. I want oh, oh, a Pixel. Oh, G Suite. Book. I was going to say Chromebook of some sort, right? Yeah, I was thinking Chromebook. Yeah, yeah, I want mobile, a Pixel book. Mobile network, yeah. connectivity. Yeah, that's that's the standby. But you want to know, you want a new Pixel. If, if they've they already changed the name of it, you want to go back to the name? What's that? Stacy said G Suite. Didn't they? Oh, oh sorry. Them. No, um, whatever, whatever the Google thing, like your, your issue with Google's enterprise or whatever. Thank you. Oh, enterprise. Yeah, but I've given up, Stacy. Yeah. <laughs> Making enterprise I've noticed work you with haven't them. been as yeah, vocal so, about so that lately. Quitter. We will later get to Chrome changes and I, I'm trying to do the new changes. And of course, some of them I can't do. And it doesn't even explain uh, why it has the strange, a strange little uh, logo. That's a box. With a, square, with, a, with, a, with a cross in it, and then another box over to the side. I, I tweeted this, and I said, what does that even mean? Huh. But it, I guess it's an office building, and if you're no, enterprise... No, it's don't, it's don't wash in hot water. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, Jeff. Stacy is impish today. Yeah, yes, yes, awesome. yes, yes. That's great. So you're right, Stacy. I would love that, but I've given up. I've given up. I've given up. Okay. Yeah. But and you, Jason, you what mentioned, do you want? Well, you had you had mentioned Pixel. Like the only thing that really comes immediately to mind, because I'll be completely honest, I kind of forgot about Google I/O this year. Like I was truly surprised by the announcement. Yeah. I was like, really? Oh yeah, that's right. It is normally next month in Google that's I.O. Where Jason and, and I know. used to rendezvous. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I missed that. I missed the the in person yeah. thing and and you know having lunch with you and everybody else that we see like the whole experience. I'm really looking forward to. Hopefully next year we return to an in person IO. Yeah. Um, and we'll see about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think the things that I look most forward to at Google IO probably because I'm more of a product person than I am a developer. I'm not a developer at all. Are kind of the, the the product how the product announcements yes, but also how kind of the developments on the development side of things tie into those products and make them even better. Um, if and I, I know you said Jeff that you know maybe a pixel announcement of of some sort. If there is to be one at Google I/O, it would be a. I mean, if you if the previous couple of years is any indication, it would be one of the A series. So it would be what would that be? The Pixel Five A. 5G right. or, or or maybe not right. even the 5A, right. 5G to make it even more confusing. It might just be the 5A. And then later this year, we get the 5A, 5G <laughs> and the 6. <laughs> Who the heck knows? I don't know. I'm already so, confused. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but maybe maybe we'll hear something like that. I'm sure there will be some sort of a producty thing there. I'm just not certain I know exactly Ooh. what it is. Well, they were talking about for and anything you want. Yeah, uh, my wish list is is really a shot in the dark, and and I, they probably won't do it. But I would be curious to see if they come up with a TikTok like uh, piece of software the way everybody else has done it. Um, they already have everything in place with Google Photos, and they've added those extra uh, updates Ooh. to the video side of things. And why not just continue to put something else out there? Because that's all you ever do is just throw stuff out there to see if it sticks. 
You know, just see how, how googly it would be, but I doubt they'll do it. I wouldn't be I'm trying to trying to remember there I'm trying to remember if YouTube already has See, I've lost track because everybody's yeah, got Yeah, see, that's the, um, YouTube's, YouTube Shorts was one YouTube thing. Shorts, that's it, yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking, you know, outside of the world of, of YouTube, just just something just built like right an, into like photos. A separate because, app? Oh. Right, built right okay. into photos because photos has the, the capability to do all of these different uh, animations and filters and stuff that it does via machine learning and it mashes up little video clips for you already. Why not let the user have a little bit more control and do their own thing the way the likes of a TikTok or Instagram Reels does? Would that have a social component to it? I feel like Photos is like less of a social app, more of a kind yeah, of Yeah, but you can but even personal. with Photos, those those things are shareable to those other applications via a link. I About see. So using photos to create the media and then sharing it out to and whatever social network mm -hmm. you want. Yeah, I could see that. Photos has a lot of that uh, a lot of that capability of uh, like you said creating uh, in interesting ways, you know, different mm -hmm. types of uh, genres of media uh, creation stuff. So I could see that. Yeah. I don't think they ever do it. But so if I you when you register, it. you can put in the question you would ask Sundar. Any oh, that's right. You would want to ask Sundar. Oh. Yeah. How are you going to make money when that. search is done? <laughs> <laughs> that's the big I mean, that's the biggest Google exis that's their existential question. <laughs> what replaces search? See, me, I, I would ask him, how is he going to uh, really get leadership to focus? You know, everybody is, is so siloed there in that, that organization. Oh, we talked about yeah. it before. So what can he do as the head to get everybody to focus and, and, and just you know, stay on course with whatever the product is and not do all of this bouncing around stuff. Yeah. That, that question, that prompt in the sign, the sign up process to, uh, you know, get a, whatever, a virtual ticket for Google IO, uh, took me by surprise. I was there for like 10 minutes. I was like, God, you know, you got to put in your Twitter <laughs> handle if you want to do this. It's gotta be a good question. Like what if they actually pick it? I, I think I ended up coming up with, you know, I don't know if it's a, like a, like a softball question, but I just was curious to know Facebook's, um, was, is it Bosworth had said, you know, the next 10 years of, uh, of kind of personal media device dominance won't be smartphones. It's going to be wearables, glasses, watches, that sort of stuff. And I'm curious to know what's what Sundar believes. Like, is the next you know, if the if the 2010s were defined by the smartphone as they have been, what are the 2020s and beyond? What what is the next uh, paradigm that we have yet to to discover? Highly on? distributed continuous computing. Such With a, a nerd. Smile. Such I'm a nerd. telling you. <laughs> Just you wait, y'all. You're going to be living it and you'll be like, oh, this is what Stacy was talking about. But I barely oh, understood her. Oh, she knew what she was talking about. She, she's, she's too hyper and a little incoherent. That's okay. <laughs> we'll see. I, I wonder, like, at, at what point we'll know, like, who's, like, what is that setting up for? Is that setting up for a keynote where Sundar Pichai answers uh, these questions yeah. live for everyone? Well, they have That's to answer questions now because he'll... They, they did it, right, so, but they can yeah. pick them. Yeah, 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 they'll cherry pick, of course, yeah. Jason from Petaluma asks. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and then we were talking about the Pixel, so we might as well mention this, and then we can take a break here. Um, yeah. The Pixel 6 and actually the Pixel 5a 5G might actually be powered by uh, Google's homemade or internally made Whitechapel uh, chip. So this is their first kind of mobile phone uh, or, or mobile device specific system on a chip. They're creating this in collaboration with Samsung. This would be the first time their own silicone goes into their um, or silicon goes into their Pixel devices, uh, pushing out Qualcomm, which has been there since the beginning with Pixel devices. Um, and of course, very similar to what Apple's been doing with the M1. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested to see how, like what that affects, what that changes with the pixel six compared to the five and before it, um, if Hopefully that actually it changes you know, cost of things, right? Well, it can yeah, also so change 
the ability to like put things like when you have your own silicon, you can like pop on your, you can pop accelerators on there. Like Apple has done, for example, for mm-hmm. their wearables and devices. So they could do that. Um, it might reduce costs because you're not paying. Yeah. I mean, you're pay, they'll still have like an arm license, but they probably won't have the Qualcomm fees. Um, yeah. Right. And it could be good across the board. If they're working with Samsung, then you could have all Android phones working from the same silicon, which means mm-hmm. you could put things on the chip in OS and tie those very closely together. That could actually lead to like better security. So okay. that what does that be, do to the companies that use Android without their chip? Well, LG got out of the mobile phone market. <laughs> so how, <laughs> One down. how many of them yeah, how many are left? There's <laughs> <laughs> there's Huawei, there's uh well, Samsung. Yeah, so Xiaomi. Well, Sorry, this Samsung is Samsung Xiaomi. they're working with though. So they're they're said they're the, the story says they're co-developing it with Samsung. So Samsung has right. their uh-huh. own Exynos chips. So if Whitechapel is Google plus Samsung, that the largest provider of Android, you know, just basically is going to become vertically integrated, which gives them some good Apple like features. Yeah, except the fact that a lot of Samsung's, well, all of Samsung's uh, premium flagship devices and are Qualcomm and and below are Qualcomm at least in the U.S. and that's just just a huge percentage of Samsung's device. Um, and Samsung has you know, worked really a long time to get and develop Exynos and to put the. I mean, they've been working on Exynos chips for like I want to say like a decade. Yeah, um, yeah, but. The other thing to think about is when you develop your own chip, you have to have a huge volume of devices and pixels are not that. So Google couldn't no. actually credibly do this alone, but they do have chip uh, designers. Good point. Good point. Okay. Yeah, very good point. So, yeah. I mean, they have to have Samsung. I mean, I think it's a good move. I think it's a necessary move. It sucks for Qualcomm, but Qualcomm's already getting, Qualcomm's already seen this writing. So they're definitely focused on other areas like servers and they bought all the Wi-Fi companies. I mean, not all mm-hmm. the Wi-Fi companies. They bought Wi-Fi business. They they have all these other businesses now. Anyway. Well, yeah, and um, guest on, on last night's All About Android, we talked about this, uh, Ryan Hager from um, Android Police uh, pointed out you, Google can make the silicon, uh, you know, that's that's driving these phones, but then there's also the question of the modem that that taps into that, and you know that that can pose a, a bit of a challenge for Google um, potentially. Well, Apple um, still yeah. uses the Qualcomm radios in their phones, don't they? Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not. That's aware. still their baseband processor. Okay. Uh, well, let me let me check. Um, but I really thought it was. They're not using the the um, application processor, but they are. Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not familiar with with the M1 to it. So a, yeah, a they they started. They've started working. They said this year that, or sorry, last year, the end of last year, that they're working on their own modem chip because they do still have Qualcomm in there. Oh, okay. All right. So maybe less of a less of an issue. One of the questions that I had on this was: Are is Google, you know, then if we're talking about a Pixel Six with Google's own uh, chip, are they targeting a you know a move back into the premium uh, market with the Pixel Six, or are they going Ooh. to stick to what they did with the Pixel Five? And uh, I mean, last night's guest, you know, was, felt pretty confident that they're going to stick in the same category that they are right now, and you're not looking at a return to the premium flagship um, era of Pixel phones. Um, but I suppose, yeah, that that remains to be seen. But I'll be curious to see if Google kind of doubles down on that, because um, I still don't even know. Like, was was it a good move for Google to um, to kind of ratchet uh, the Pixel Five down into the mid range? You know, I was pretty positive going into it, but then when I reviewed the Pixel Five, like I was a little underwhelmed with it. That's why I use the Pixel Four XL now. Like, I just kind of didn't didn't see why I wanted to continue using the Pixel 5. And so I don't know that I'm entirely sold on that strategy personally, but um, we'll find out if that makes a, a difference with Whitechapel. Wait, what do you mean by- I'm still uh, in the 3A XL. I'm still in the 3A, so yeah. But what do you mean by going, um, is it a cost function or were you disappointed in like features? I 
or I, was you it know, laggy? You know what? It, it, when I when I think about it, it wasn't that there was a feature about it that I didn't like. It was just I was unimpressed. Like I used it, and I and in using it, I realized there was no reason for me to use that when the four XL works just fine for me. It was, it was like one of the first times where I used the latest and greatest and realized I didn't need it. And that's probably what it was. <laughs> Usually I'm, I'm right there on, on the, you know, trying to stay along with the cutting edge and the pixel five felt less cutting edge to me and more like another, yeah. you know what I mean? It, 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 I it so didn't appreciate you much. going down this road. I so appreciate you going down that road, sir. That, that, it, Cause it's just been a whole mess of marketing, not just from Google, but from all of these OEMs about, Hey, jump on this latest and greatest and pay a premium for it. Even though nothing is really going to happen to justify that extra cost that you just put in. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is it, maybe is, so maybe is I'm it growing the, up. Is it the, <laughs> the phones are getting boring? I mean, were there features that you like, cause I feel like phones are kind of boring now. Yeah, I, would I, I won't say boring. Yeah, which I would is okay, say actually. just a stalemated yeah. at the time. You know, it's just there's only so much a phone can do. Same right. with um, same with the laptop. There's only so much a laptop can do before it stops be- becoming a laptop and turns into an actual workstation. You know, mm-hmm. there are limitations. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, and, and that kind of ties in a little bit to the, the story that we only alluded to just a little bit ago about LG, uh, you know, basically shutting down their mobile division. You know, it's kind of a sh- kind of a shame that that happened, not because LG was producing phones that were taking the world by storm necessarily, um, but because LG was uh, was really doing some interesting things with they were really playing around with a mobile phone to try and see like, OK, everybody's used to a, a slab, you know, a, a black slab phone. Like, let's let's do something different. Well, let's bring out the LG wing that has the little screen that flips up to the side. And sure, it looks funny and goofy, but they actually you know, decided as a company to put their marketing and their their money behind that idea to see if they could stir the pot a little bit. And uh, yeah, phones have become boring. They, they really have. Maybe they I'm don't need the to be blo- more than, that, than what they are, though, you know. Uh, I think I think when you go to Stacy's level of multiple devices, you have a blob that's your personal thing. It goes to different devices. It goes to your um, glasses or your ears yeah. or your will I am yeah. mask or whatever. Um, that, that's when it you know it's it's personal distribute, distributed computing becomes interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so who knows? Maybe Sundar Pichai will read my <laughs> my my uh, question to him after all, and then we'll know, and then and then uh, we can we can get ready for the future. Uh, let's uh, let's take a break, and then we'll, actually when we get back, um, Stacy, you want to talk about you, the uh, the Nest Hub too? Because I know you were bummed to miss out on last week. Oh yeah, because okay. I had it. Yes, I will talk about it. I will show it to you. Awesome, all. excellent. We can get your take Yay. on the Nest Hub too. Uh, when we come back or when we return to uh, the the show. But first, let's take a break and thank the sponsor of this episode of This Week in Google. This episode is brought to you by Melissa. So, you know, if you've ever uh, forgotten to check the date on a carton of milk or pretty much any food that you have in your, in your refrigerator, uh, like milk, customer data, you may think it lasts forever but it goes bad. Eventually, it goes bad. In fact, up to 30% of customer data goes bad each year. Melissa, make sure that your data is accurate. Make sure that it's current so that you reach the right customers all the time. Their tools have helped businesses maintain fresh data for over 35 years. They've been doing this a long time. They know know data. Melissa knows data. That's why over 10,000 businesses trust the address experts. With Melissa, you can validate existing customer data and you can find new customers. uh, So you aren't wasting time and money dealing with all of that inaccurate customer data, that spoiled milk, in other words. So you can get accurate data that helps you uh, get to know your customers even better. Uh, so you can do things like verif- verify you know, their addresses, emails, phone numbers, uh, names, 
all in real time with Melissa. And you'll see this on websites when you're plugging in an address and it gives you that kind of that autofill. It's pinging a database. Often what you're looking at, that's that's Melissa working on the back end, filling that information for you, giving you that up-to-date, correct information. Melissa's global address verification service verifies addresses for more than 240 countries and territories at the point of entry. If you're tired of having duplicate customer information in your database, well, Melissa's data matching um, ultimately eliminates clutter and duplicates. So it increases the accuracy of your database and reduces things like postage and mailing costs that might be associated with getting that wrong. Uh, get the information that completes your customer profiles better and more thoroughly so you can add consumer demographic information to your records, uh, such as property data. You can insert in marital status, social media handles. That's super useful. Melissa's flexible deployment options offer different platforms that'll suit any preference, any business size, any budget. With flexible on-prem uh, web service, secure FTP processing, and software as a service delivery options, uh, ultimately that just means you can choose the best way to meet the unique needs of your business. Melissa continually undergoes independent security audits. That's to reinforce their commitment to their uh, data security, privacy, and compliance requirements. So SOC2, HIPAA, GDPR compliant, no problems there. Melissa's supporting communities and qualifying essential workers as well uh, during COVID-19. So you can see if your organization qualifies for six months of free service, all you got to do is apply online for that. Don't put up with sour customer contact data. Try Melissa's APIs in the developer portal. It's super easy to log on, sign up, and then start playing in the API sandbox uh, anytime, 24-7. Get started today with 1,000 records cleaned for free at melissa.com slash twit. That's melissa.com slash twit. And we thank Melissa for their support of This Week in Google. All right. So the Nest Hub 2. And Stacy, you've had this for a little while. You've been, I imagine you've been sleeping with this uh, uh, to the side of your bed analyzing your sleep and giving you data that you can do something with. I don't know. Well, what do you think? <laughs> yes and no. So let's see. Let's see what you can see. So I moved it out of my bedroom. So you can't see my sleep data, but you can see like right there, it's telling you I have no sleep data, but it's giving me, you know, the typical Google home screen, possibly in dark mode. Jeff, don't look. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm asleep, though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm trying to see. One of the things I didn't like about it is you have to use the Google Fit app. Okay. Actually, let's start this whole thing off like a formal review. Here's what we're talking about. We're talking about this device. It's a seven-inch uh, Google Nest display that sits by your bedroom. Um, or that they want it to sit by your bedroom because 20% of people apparently put these devices in their bedroom and Google is like, oh, I know. Well, I'll work that angle. Um, right. Normally, so, and it has Google's solely radar in it. Um, and that is what it uses to track your sleep. And it tells you, I'd show you, but right now the photo is of my daughter. So I'm not going to show you that. When I get to a photo of something that I can show you, I'll show you how it shows your sleep tracking. You opt into it. It is all right. Uh, I had a real issue with it deciding that I was sleeping when I was just laying in bed reading. And Google will tell mm. you, no, no, it knows you're just reading in bed and it shows you that. But mine actually showed me as being asleep. So it also uses, it has three mics and it uses the mics to determine if you're snoring or if you are uh, coughing. What I did discover is that, well, sometimes I do snore, Sometimes my husband snores and Google can't really tell who's snoring. It can tell that I'm tossing and turning because it only notices me, but it doesn't know who's snoring. So that's one thing. It, the sleeping it was pretty tied to my Fitbit when it worked. Um, I will say I absolutely hated when I didn't sleep well and Google would be like, you slept too much last night or you need to improve your bedtime. I was like, shut up, Google. Do not tell me what to do. 
Um, I got really upset with Google. I was not prepared for those kind of emotions that came out. Um, partially, I think, because Google, to, my Google is a man, uh, male's voice, and I did not need a man telling me how I slept. Uh, <laughs> don't, <laughs> like, don't man sleep. Don't man sleep me. I really think that was it. I'm just like, normally it doesn't bother me that Google uses a man's voice, but when Google was like judging my sleep, I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's super easy. It's super comfortable. If you want to track your sleep and, you know, you don't want to like spend a lot of time on it, this is fine. It's not going to change the way you sleep unless you're just ready for that. Um, just because, you know, you know, you've got to go to bed at a regular time every night, right? Uh, yeah. you know, you got to wake up at Allegedly. the same time every day, but it's not like you're actually going to do that unless you're going to do it, right? Google's not going to change that. It can do things like suggest that you lower your lights and it'll be like, do you want us to lower your lights at the best time for you to go to sleep? And you're like, mm. uh, no, I do not want you in charge of my life, Google. So <laughs> anyway, um, Home control is fine. It listens a lot better. It sounds so much better than the original one. There is no camera on it. And I mean, I like this. I put it in my office for now um, just because I've got a Fitbit. So I already know how I sleep. Um, yeah. Questions? Well, some of the stuff you mentioned there, like the the whole warning of, okay, you should probably start dimming your lights right about now. Um I think that's a good idea for people that don't quite understand, you know, circadian rhythms and, and, and getting your body tuned up for proper rest. Right. Mm -hmm. That is that is true. Um, yeah. I'd be like, Stacy, I'd be arguing with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not ready to. Don't nanny me. No, and that's why you sound the way you sound every day. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Yeah. It's up to you. If you want, I mean, is it is it helpful? The, oh, the other thing I will say, because I did voice matching, if I, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it'll tell me, how did I sleep last night? It looks like you don't have any sleep data recorded for that day. Okay. But if you had asked that and you were here, Jeff, it wouldn't actually tell you because it's tuned to my voice. So it ties like the sleep data to my voice, which is nice. So I guess if my husband wanted to know how I slept, he couldn't. <laughs> Ah, uh, right. right. Um, so that was nice. I, I don't know what else to tell you. What are the three question. dots on the top, Stacey? Oh. Oop. Microphone? Can, I, I don't know what y'all can see. Hold on. This is the solely thing right here. The center that thing, thing, okay. The center thing, and then those are microphones, I believe. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. okay. Um, did you ever have the Pixel 4 or the 4XL? Or was it only the 4XL that had the Soli radar? Or it I can't remember if It was only, both did, yeah. But. Okay, here's a picture. This is what it looks like. See that little thing up there in this corner? If you have yeah, sleep uh -huh. sensing on, that's how you know. And it's always on there. So you know that it's going to try to like watch you sleep. Ah, uh, got it. So that's a little. What a cute doggy. Who's a good puppy? Who's a good yeah, dog? Cute puppies. Um, do you, does the Soli radar make more sense for a device like this than it did on a mobile yes. phone? Yes. Oh, and you can start like, this is actually kind of neat in my office setting or in the kitchen. Like I don't actually have to touch the screen if it's playing stuff. I can swipe to the next song or pause the music. I think this is pause. I haven't actually. How reliable anything. is that for you? Actually? Uh, I got up to... Four feet away, and it was reliable. Oh, wow! Um, so, because I can't say that about the four XL phone. Just swiping through Spotify or what have you it oh, is God. the worst experience. Just, I'm like, just pick up the phone, Aunt She's. And tap the button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be surprised if anyone that has that phone actually like is still like trying to make that stuff work because it never. You know what, y'all? Well it's probably me. about three feet away. Now that I'm that's impressive. About it. Still, yeah, that's impressive. I mean, that's it's probably a larger than what the sensor phone offers. I imagine it was, it's, it's a larger sensor. Yeah. It's nice if you're like playing in, like if you're in the kitchen or your hands are dirty. Like I do it because right. I'm lazy and it's far away on my desk, but everything has to be cleared in front of it. So it's not like, like if there's something Got in front it. of it, obviously won't see it. 
Right. I'm literally having my morning routine of washing my face, brushing my teeth or whatever. And I have music going. And every now and then I want to hear something with a little more. Um, so I swipe in the air like a Jedi to tell Spotify to go to a different track. Never happened. And the phone is right there <laughs> on the sink with me. You know, it's, it's right there. Never yeah. happened. Is, is this how much? I, I can't remember how much this is. Oh, boy. I think it's $99. I think, it's I think so, bucks. too. Um, yeah, I just wanted to just, yeah, $99. You could put this in your bathroom. There's no camera. There are microphones. Right. Um, there is a physical switch for the off button for the mic. Um, so if you wanted to stick that in your bathroom and you solely, you could like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have the sounds of you peeing, I guess, if you're worried about that. Um, <laughs> and then I don't think it would but work. While you're in the shower, shower, you could change tracks. Well, me, I'm like, I don't know how far away Maybe. your shower is and the moisture yeah. rating on this thing, but mm-hmm. yeah, I was gonna say There's it's. That. I wonder how well it would stand up to, yeah. Oh stand, yeah, the, the humid stuff. bathroom. Whoops. Yeah, there is that <laughs> aspect, but um, sweet. I mean, a hundred okay. bucks is not that expensive. I'm just. No. I, I know that the marquee feature of this, or at least the feature that Google is really touting, is the sleep tracking, and I'm just in that camp where I'm like, how, like, how important is like knowing sleep data about myself to me? It's not at all. But I realize other people have different needs. I just don't know what I would do with that information. Like, I know when I wake up in the morning whether I had a good sleep or not. So <laughs> I'll tell that. you, what, <laughs> you'll stop drinking alcohol because, mm. good golly, gosh. I sleep, I mean, after five days of no alcohol, I can totally see it in my sleep like pattern. And it's, oh yeah. I mean, it's really distressing. I'll be honest. I'll be like, oh man, do I want to sleep? Do I want to have some restorative deep sleep tonight? Or do I want to have a glass of wine? Right. Like, these are terrible I, I was gonna decisions. Say that, I was going to say something similar along those lines, Mr. Howell. It, that information is important if you're someone like me that knows they have bad sleeping habits to be able to get some type of analysis on what happened the previous day and previous night's sleep to try to uh, combat that and and lead up to a better night's sleep. The days Mm. that the days that I really, really push myself physically, um, you know, doing calisthenics or whatever, I'm assuming I'm going to just crash and, and just sleep like the best ever. And most mm. of the time, it's not that. It, it it's usually the inverse of that. I'm wide, mm-hmm. you know, waking up more often and stuff like that. So I have to try to curtail how much I push myself during the day because I still want to sleep, but yet be able to recover properly to be able to perform the next day. So yeah, mm. that data is pretty important. I wonder, mm. since we have the Pixel Four XL, would it, would we be able to get something like this in that phone? Because you have phone stands out there that you can put on your nightstand, and it has to. The sensor right there. I wonder if we could do that in the future. I don't think, I mean, since they didn't put in the five, I don't think Google's investing on the solely on the phone. No. And no, all of the, phone, this is important. So. All of the data, all your sleep radar data is processed locally yeah. on the device and only the insights are sent to the cloud. So that's really important. And I mean, sure. your phone processor could do it, but. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing the the sensor that provides the the solely radar capabilities is pretty small on the phone because it needed to be, and is, uh-huh. I'm guessing it's not as small on the Nest Hub because mm-hmm. that's a larger form factor device. It gives more distance. That's probably why on the phone you have to be really close to it for it to register anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, versus the Nest Hub, if you can get close three enough feet. to I don't just think pick you can it do up. any of those interactions <laughs> on the phone from three feet away. I don't think it's going to do nothing when you try yeah. that. Um, oh, I so did want to say that too. There's one other thing about this that gives me pause, and I don't like the way that Google did this. I see why they did it. They talked about this in the the, the launch for this. They said, "Hey, for now, the sleep sensing is a free feature," and when right. I was doing the, when I was doing the calibration, there was a tiny little message on the screen that said something about uh, the Nest Aware subscription, like warning me that it might become part of that. And I was like, whoa. Um, But it's possible that after Google figures out what it's going to do with Fitbit, it will turn the, the sleep tracking into a paid feature, which means, like, I hope they don't do it this way. I mean, at least they're trying to tell you but if the sleep yeah. sensing is really important to you on this device, know that you may end up having to pay more for it after the hmm. like in like a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
which is a little sucky. And to not know the details of that now is kind yeah. of, especially if you're buying the device for that, that's uh, I feel like Google should ideal. probably, the best way to implement that would be like, going forward, for buyers of this device, it's going to cost X. But if you already right. have it, you yeah. got a year free. Right. Yeah, something like or that. Or free forever, kind of, you know. Like, I, I realize maybe, maybe it's... Uh, maybe it's me not understanding what it takes to run a business, but I kind of feel like, you know, this is Google we're talking about. They, they, they were, they were floating free storage on photos for years with how, you know, how many tr- they deployed trillions fiber of- networks around the country at cost <laughs> like of this billions. is sleep data. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the comparison's way different. Like, just why, why pay for sleep data? Like, I don't know. Give it, no, give it to us for free. If you think, Jeff, like l- let's talk about what Sundar wants and thinks the future of. If it's not mm-hmm. slabs of glass and advertising, it is services. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. right. Wearables yeah, okay. having that day. I'm just putting that out there. And 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 yeah. and recent, I think recently said that you know you were talking about what the decades of the net before, and that we're passing out of the advertiser supported net into the from his view because. And recent horror was thinks it's a media company into paying creators directly net, but a different way you can look at it is you go, go from the ad supported net to the service net. Now the problem is very few winners there, very few people aren't going to, you know, there's only so many places you're going to spend your money on stuff, on services, on content, on anything. Uh, and, and the marketing cost of it is extremely high. So I don't know that that's any Valhalla you arrive at, but nonetheless, you're right, Stacy. Services with value, I think packaged services with value. Uh, then, the, then the brand matters. Then do you trust Google to do all these services for you? Do you trust Amazon right, to do it right. for you? Do you trust Facebook? No, you don't. Um, and so on. Yep. Hmm. Well, cool. Okay, so it sounds like you're, you're pretty positive on this device. I mean, there's obviously a couple of asterisks involved. The sleep, you know, the potentially having to pay for the sleep data somewhere down the line, something that someone's going to have to ask themselves. But 100 bucks for this device, even if it doesn't do the sleep data, if, if you take sleep data and sleep, sleep tracking out of the equation, is it a recommend? Is it worth 100 bucks? Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Oh, if you don't have an... Oh, oh now, we, now we hear you. Oh, I was like, I don't know what happened. If, okay. <laughs> if you don't have a, a Nest, a Google Nest display, I don't know what the heck to call these things right now, um, or you want one without a camera, this is a great one. If you already have one, unless you listen to a lot of music, I mean, it'd be worth upgrading if you really care about the quality of the sound. It's not going to sound as good as like the Nest audios, but it sounds way better than the first small Nest right. club display. Then you'd upgrade, but yeah, for ninety nine bucks, for ninety nine bucks, it's a great digital picture frame. I mean, yeah, the sunrise alarm is nice. I, I, I feel like it's okay. Yeah, I re- I remember when the standalone Google Home was one hundred thirty bucks, and that was just a little a little dome looking thing with no screen. So you know the price on. So I didn't put this in the rundown, but your old friends at Sonos, did you see this? Are the building realm? a speaker into hidden art with IKEA. Yes, the symphony. Oh, really? Symphony. Right. So you, you could imagine this Google stuff being embedded into all kinds of things. You know, your your light switches. You said earlier, and God knows what all. I feel like light switches are a terrible medium for speakers, but sure. yes, <laughs> tiny little speakers. <laughs> I mean, I, they, they exist. I, and but I've, I've actually tried. I've tried light bulbs that have speakers. I mean, so you pop them in your ceiling, and your light bulbs really. Speak. Yeah. You've tried everything. Uh, Senglid. Senglid makes a lot of really interesting light bulbs if you're in the smart light bulb market, and they're very inexpensive. So, hmm. anyway. I like remember hearing about the speaker light bulbs and wondering if it would actually work because of all of the heat. Um, they're generated. LEDs, so they're not. LEDs. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Y'all, the cool. father of LEDs died um, last week, in case we want to honor that. Because oh, I didn't know that. He got a uh, I had not heard that. Uh, I can't. Who's it? it is Samu Akasaki? Yes. yes. Blue LED inventor who shared the Nobel Prize in physics. Died at 92. Rest peacefully. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I had missed that too. LEDs are all the rage. So thank you for that. 
That, sorry, that that was really random, but I was like, blue LEDs <laughs> no. used to be like difficult and expensive and rare, and he helped change that. Yeah, no kidding. Um, let's see here. Cool. Well, thank you for uh, your thoughts on on that. I was very curious about that. Uh, we do have a little bit more Google news uh, here. Let's see here. Woohoo! Yeah, I know. Uh, it looks like uh, it looks like all these, well, all these. At least this week, there's two people, uh, two uh, notable names of people leaving Google. One of them, an AI ethics uh, researcher, Sammy Bengio. Bengio. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name. I probably am. One of those was wrong, anyways. Uh, Google research manager. He oversaw the AI ethics group. Quit on Tuesday. Actually, Timnit Gebru and Margaret Mitchell both actually reported to Sammy. Uh, he's been with the company since 2007, and so he has bailed as well. As well, this whole AI ethics thing is just the, oof, just, just the hits keep coming for Google as far as that's concerned. Yeah, this was poor thinking because it's not like it's not like AI experts are a dime a dozen, right? These people can mm, go right. anywhere. And so, oof. Yeah. If, if they don't like what that you're doing as a company. That would be something to ask Pachai at I.O., but it's not necessarily huh. for I.O. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and the thing or is, like, he's only going to gatekeeper. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> He's only going to answer the ones that they feel comfortable uh, answering. Of and I, I just something tells me they would not. They would choose to not answer that. Oh uh, come on! <laughs> which I suppose doesn't mean don't ask. But have some guts, guys. <laughs> Google. <laughs> you can do it. Uh, not only that, uh, the uh, boss, the head of Waymo, John Kraftkick. Um, or is it Kraftsick? Why can I not pronounce people's names? Anyways, announced his departure. He's been with the company five and a half years. Um, he was essentially brought in in 2015 to help bring Waymo to more of a commercial viability uh, state. And I think Google and Waymo kind of expected self-driving vehicles and the Waymo division to be further along now than it is. Um, but this is just the the way of uh, the way of Waymo, I suppose, right now. So he's going to be replaced by uh, co CEOs, uh, Takedra Mawakena and Dmitry Dolgov are going to replace him. So it takes two people to replace uh, Kafkik. So is this left a job at the Chicago Tribune? They had to replace me with two people, and it feels really good when that happens. Yeah, I, I told bet. you I was working too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was See? like, I think it's the worst. You're like, oh man, I was so working way too hard. I was such a oh, right. <laughs> yeah. It's confirmation. It's confirmation that you're leaving, and that was probably a good move. Um, the, when I read when I read through this, though, the question that come up, came up for me is: Are we as tech journalists and our consumers who are who are like really pro tech and pro autonomous vehicles? Are we just too optimistic? Too um, too optimistic about the future of self-driving cars versus what can actually be delivered at this point. Do we feel like yeah, things so. would be more delivered than they are right now, or do we feel like it's on track? It's a bit late. I mean, I remember thinking my daughter wouldn't have to get her driver's license. If yeah, I mean, according right. to plan. And right. I thought 2020 was going to be the year for all of this stuff, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I'd like right. to see this this to continue to progress um so i'm not totally I'm sure poo-pooing it, it or anything but we and still it is progressing yeah but it's like yeah. you know it's like when you move right the last like 80 percent is um what is it what it, come on y'all help me out here it's like you're you're like 90 percent packed and the last like 10 percent takes the most amount of time or is the right. most difficult yeah I know it's all, all the little stuff that's not quite so easy to just that, that's, that's where we are we're like room. We yeah. got the big stuff down, and now we're like, oh, crikey, people yeah. walk in the middle of the street where they're not supposed to. What are we going to do about that? <laughs> that's a, that's a really good point. Ah. Yeah. Good point. All right. So optimistic again. That's <laughs> self-driving cars. You're doing all right. You're doing all, all right, autonomous vehicles. Um, let's see here. My voice is going. Sorry about that. Um did you guys hear about this Lyra codec? I thought this was neat. Google had announced this a month ago, I think, in relation uh, to uh, Duo. And essentially, it's an audio codec that Google has been developing. 
to um, specifically for low, uh, like really slow connections. So essentially, this would allow for high quality audio to be transmitted over even 2G connections. Yeah, I think we talked about it at the time because it was it was it was meant for um, countries with less bandwidth. Yeah, so make a yeah. yeah. And they were bringing Emerging it to duo. markets. <laughs> right, emerging markets, places where they might only have 2G connectivity, right? Like it's mm -hmm. uh, not something that we see here in the U.S., uh, but in other parts of the, the world, absolutely. And uh, it turns out Google has open sourced this. I think they said they were going to do this initially. They just hadn't done it yet. Now they're opening, open, <laughs> opening sourced, open sourcing uh, Lyra and uh, making the code available on GitHub so that other developers uh, creating their own product, uh, products can bring in that technology and improve the audio quality and reduce the, uh, the level of data that, that's required in order to transmit it. So that's cool stuff. I think that's the key, opening it up to the community and letting yeah. more hands and eyes get involved in this to, to really bring this to life and make it better. Uh, support, on the other hand, may be another story, but at least this is something that'll be out there in the wild for people to be able to take advantage of. Yeah. Yeah, we'll certainly see how it how it uh, distributes and you know how it's used and and what that leads to. But I think that's good news. Um, Google has acquired uh, a startup, and this is uh, what is it called? Dysonics. So apparently, this happened last December, and we're only just finding out about it now. And Google's been kind of cagey as far as. Uh, any any of this, they're not really commenting on it much. But uh, Dysonix, uh, as as the company prior to to acquisition, developed a motion tracker for headphones. So this would have this uh, acquisition. It would seem would have to do with 3D audio, which you know when or you could have they finally fix the damn pixel buds. <laughs> this 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 is this is like the worst news. If you ask me, why am I going to worry about? 3D and spatial audio and stuff like that. If just regular functioning earbuds don't right. work, yeah. So that's that's. Ugh, come on, Google. Maybe they're going to come out in like a year or two with something that's actually good and work and revolutionary. If it I don't just know. works, <laughs> eventually it just works. Dot dot dot. Eventually, um, Apple is doing this with their Apple i uh, AirPods Magic. Pro, I believe. Oh, they have, I was thinking uh, of the Magic had had. Phones or was it? Or, yeah, audio. was it the larger ones? It's yeah, well, not. I know that I know the big over the ear five hundred something dollar ones have it. I don't know about mm -hmm. the the fancier pros. Yeah, AirPod uh, yeah, pros. Yeah. AirPod, um, yeah. I believe also. Yeah, the AirPods Pro article I read anyway said AirPods Pro. So it there it the three D audio is there, spatial audio is there. Galaxy Buds Pro also uh, offer this. The idea being, um, if you're watching something that supports it, like, you know, when you go to move your head, the sound, like, I don't know that I've ever really experienced this, to be honest, but the sound will kind of follow your, your head movement while in some cases keeping the like dialogue at the point, uh, the place in space where the person is that's talking, just as one example. So Probably the pixel buttons, you move your head, no that. sound followed you. <laughs> right. <laughs> you move your head and it drops off incompletely. Yeah. Drop, yeah. Yeah, completely. The closest stopped. I've seen is is like with the uh, Oculus in, um, what's the other Oh, yeah. One? The Vive. They, they had mm -hmm. ambisonic sound uh, with their 360 video. And yeah, you know, that's true. That's about as close as you're going to get. Yeah. And this is yeah, designed so for things like that. AR, right? And VR. This isn't, I mean, I think it could be cool if like you're imagining Alien remastered for that, where you're like, you turn your head and suddenly everything's, you know, changes. Mm -hmm. But really, I think it's for less like today's entertainment and more the immersive entertainment of the future. Yeah. Right. Make more right. sense anyway. <laughs> Where it might appear, uh, you know, nine to five Google posits, you know, possibly the Google Pixel Buds, like we've been talking. But I don't know. Like, I guess I don't think of that kind of um, media experience as as a tiny little earbud that you put in your ear. I think of that more as like the over the ear, kind of a a, a bigger presentation sort of approach. So, who knows what? Let that me ask you to, something, but. Mr. Howell. With with having earbuds in your ear versus wearing cans. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you just have a less immersive experience wearing earbuds because of a fit or something like that. Because a lot of times the 
earbuds, if they if they're properly fit, they block out a lot of ambient sound. Yeah, that's is, true. Is, is that something that you have mm. fought against and just rather have cans? Honestly, I think it. No, yeah, I was going to say I think it depends on the application. It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm out. If I'm out gardening, I'd much rather have the earbuds and that's perfectly fine. I can put on noise cancellation and it really doesn't matter. But if I'm sitting mm. down in front of a screen and I'm watching something, I would much rather have the over ear experience and get, you know, because inevitably, at least the headphones that I'm going to use that are over ear are probably going to be better drivers, you know, larger, ah, larger components. Yeah. It's just going to sound a little better because it okay. has the space to do that. Versus in earbuds, but I mean they're coming a long way. Now we're getting yeah, they're nice getting isolation. there. Some of them are <laughs> absolutely. We're getting great yeah, I isolation. Bought, I bought some with noise cancellation and all sorts of fancy things. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, I just did a comparison <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. The the Galaxy. Oh, Buds you had a Jabra Elite, right? And the Jabra eighty five T. Yeah, the Elite eighty five. <gasps> That's what I just got. The, yeah, th those are my favorites. I love those. Yeah. Yeah, I've been with the Jabras for a few years now, and I'm I'm really Me too. every every I iteration from the is just better and better. Yeah, Twit that's TV a good upgrade. Slash hot twit.tv slash hot. <laughs> Thank you for the promo. <laughs> yeah, I think that was last week's episode or the week before. I can't remember. No, it was the week before. Point. Last week's was Cal Digit. There we go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know they they've come a long way. Um, they're doing noise, you know, active noise cancellation now. Um, it's it, I think with those, it's all about the fit. You gotta get the the yeah. the tips that fit your ear canal perfectly because if they're too big, they're gonna push out. If they're too small, they're gonna fall out, and you're not gonna get that nice <laughs> bass response. You know, so you gotta find the right fit. And some people just do not care for that like suction feeling. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm used to it at this point. But if I'm gonna sit down and watch a movie, I would much rather have you know over the ear, or I'm gonna listen to like an album at my desk. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Maybe Google will come out with an over-the-ear uh, solution similar to what Apple has done recently. That that could absolutely happen. I could totally see that. Um, oh, boy. I'm realizing we should probably take a break. Let's take a break, and <laughs> uh, then we will. We're probably going to branch out beyond the Google sure. after we take this break. And there's some news, you know, some Facebook news, some other things mm. dotted throughout. I just saw, I actually just saw in the in the the, the chat that Twitter uh, might be in talks to acquire Clubhouse. We could talk about yeah, those that. talks uh, ended. They, ended we're those told. talks oh. ended, so they're not might. They're they're now. Oh, they happen to. Which oh, I'm it happened like, and whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of like, themselves. of course someone's going to be like, oh, crap, everyone's on Clubhouse. Let me call them up yeah. and be like, I'll give you yeah, a crazy absolutely. amount of money. They really qualify as this news. <laughs> totally. Yeah. All right, well, then fine. We won't talk about that. We'll talk about something <laughs> else. I don't know. We got a whole lot more in here and having a great time hanging out with uh, hanging out with you guys. Uh, Jeff Jarvis, Stacey Higginbotham, Aunt Pruitt, thank you uh, for welcoming on me uh, to the show today. I appreciate Always. it. Always. Let's see here. We want to uh, tell you about Cashfly. Cashfly is the sponsor of this week's episode of This Week in Google. Cashfly is also the deliverer of so much of Twit's media throughout the years. Cashfly is the CDN that has been innovating content delivery since 19. 99. And we here at Twit, we know them well because we've been working with them and using them for over 10 years. So you wouldn't be getting the media that you get from us if it wasn't for Cashfly. They are awesome. Cashfly now offers ultra low latency streaming. And it's not the WebRTC solution uh, that's let you down in the past. Stream delays are less than one second. Uh, but And that's just kind of the start. There are plenty more perks there. Um, they have an HTML5 player that offers easy support anywhere with SDK available for even better mobile support, whether you need your player to run on websites or applications, uh, mobile devices, or another platform, uh, Cashfly has you covered. Cashfly is the fastest CDN uh, for throughput globally. They have over 50 POPs distributed all over uh, the world. They have a low latency network. That means that your video streams are going to be streaming 
quickly anywhere you have viewers, regardless of what continent they're on, they're going to be served uh, much closer to where they actually are, that it, content isn't coming from halfway across the world, in other words. Um, also, super scalable. Cashfly's ultra low latency video platform can deliver video to more than a million users concurrently, as well as ingest thousands of synchronous streams. And you get reliable ingest there as well. Their platform is designed for transmuxing thousands of streams simultaneously with live failover. They can ingest RTMP, RTMPS, SRT, and so much more to deliver ultra low latency SLDP and HLS streams at the same time. And you can get a solution that's really tailored exactly for you. You get a custom built solution based on your unique needs and it's built on top of their reliable, robust global network uh, with the ingest and delivery where you actually need it. And best of all, they have 24-7, 365 day priority support. So you know they're always going to be there for you uh, when you need them. Cashfly's infrastructure is massive. They can support more than 1 million concurrent streams today because of their reliable throughput and scalability. They are up to five times faster than other CDNs. It's the world's most reliable CDN backed by a 100% SLA. And Cashfly is helping others in need as well. They partnered with World Central Kitchen. They have a goal of serving 300,000 warm meals and uh, so far, they've already donated over $50,000, so they're giving back, which is awesome. Cashfly pioneered the first Anycast CDN infrastructure in 2002, and their best hop technology automatically finds the fastest route to and from customer origin across their global network of pops uh, for maximum performance and reliability. So just for Twit listeners, Cashfly is giving away a complimentary detailed analysis of your current CDN bill uh, and usage trends. So you can see if you're overpaying 20% or more for your CDN. Learn more at twit.cashfly.com. That's twit.cashfly.com. And if you've liked getting Twit content uh, reliably and exactly when you want it, when you need it and fast, then you're going to like Cashfly because that's what we've used. And uh, we thank Cashfly for their support. I love having them on board with the Twit Network. Thank you, guys. All right. Breaking uh, news. Breaking news. Oh, okay, great. Jump into the breaking There's news. There's a ketchup shortage. Oh. Really? <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> we were so <laughs> excited. And now we're like, oh. I know. Oh, ketchup. Um, yeah, no, okay. okay. You go back, back to normal. It's okay. Well, th th <laughs> there might be more detail in there. Like, what, no, like, it's all right. what is it's it? All right. Is I'm it just, just is it Heinz only? Pandemic or? related. I don't understand. I think people were using a lot of ketchup during the uh, pandemic. Um, so, no, uh, we don't have to do Restaurants that. are facing a nationwide ketchup shortage. Ketchup shortage. This is bad. This is a sauce shortage. <laughs> It's true. I mean, I can think. I can only think of what uh, we've done in this household to contribute to the ketchup shortage, and uh, we definitely have used our fair share of ketchup. We've got two young daughters, so uh, As, I was going to say it's all because there's a bunch of children in homes nowadays. That's that's yeah, yeah right. totally it's right. All that's all it is. <laughs> it's not. Right. And, and parents don't want to cook like actual food. You're like, uh, chicken nuggets again. Yes. Yeah, you, you went exactly where I was about to go, <laughs> Stacey. I was going to say, you know, after a year of being here with the kids and realizing like it used to be easy to like send them to school and you knew at least some of your meals were going to be like passed off onto somebody else. Now it's like, we've got to get really creative three meals a day, <laughs> every single day of the week, every single week of the year. At a certain point, it's like, I don't care. Drench it in ketchup, whatever, whatever. It <laughs> as long as you just yeah. eat it. Mac and cheese. I think oh. my daughter eats that like probably five times a week. And yeah. I feel no guilt. I'm yeah, just like, oh. <laughs> Mac and cheese and ketchup. Oh, man. Well, not together. No, together. <laughs> I, I, I guess no joke. No. That's I, real no. talk. I've heard that too. Yes. Oh, yes. No. Okay. No, I'm not saying that for me. I, I I don't know that I've ever had ketchup in my mac and cheese, and it sounds disgusting. But I, I kid you not, last night I was reading my daughter a story uh, called, uh, I think it's called Chrysanthemum. And in it, 
the 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 kid in the story talks about having her mac and cheese with ketchup. So it's a thing. It's in kids' stories. Oh no, go. we've just spread it. See, see what you've done? Now you're a vector of disinformation out there in the world. <laughs> I'm amplifying oh, no. ketchup in mac and cheese. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> just see, this is how it happens. I didn't mean to do that. It's how it happens. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> how about 500 more than 500 million users' phone numbers and and data leaked? Can you explain uh, this to me? That was a 2019 leak. Why is it in the news now? I'm, I'm just not, it was put up somewhere. The data I just was actually put it. up for people to have access yeah. to. Beforehand, it was it was leaked, but no one shared it. So who who put right. it up? Who had it to put it up? Whoever I didn't follow that story. I don't know that we know, or I don't know that I've seen anyways, who put it up necessarily. Um, yet, however, it is now appearing in on the dark web for free. So it's not even uh, this large mass amount of, of information that is being you know sold on the dark web. It's just there. And anyone has access to it. And it has you know a lot of phone number information. Well, oh my which, God, they're gonna ruin the phone. Jeez, I might be getting junk calls. <laughs> could be oh, could be I get. The phone is useless. Yeah, useless. That's true. I get I get far more uh spam calls on my phone number oh, than I do I actual calls. Oh yeah. That's why the Google screening is so great. Google's like, hey, <clears throat> do you want me to screen this? And I'm like, oh yeah, I do. Yeah. Like, yeah, why is my phone not doing that lately though? That's that's a good point. Lately yeah, I'm not seeing that. that. How do you turn that on? Where do you turn that on? Every time I update Google, I lose features and gain features and I there's no rhyme or reason to it. It drives me bonkers. Um, where did I turn that on? I think it offered it to me one day. Do I have? I, <laughs> what I bugs me is every time I open the dialer, it has that whole, do that you want to place them on hold while they have you on hold? Whatever the little, I think. Screen calls. That there it is. There it or is. Call yeah, screen. Yours is verified. Where, where, did, yeah. where did you get to it? How'd you get to it? It's well. It's, so if you go into your phone app, I'm not going to go out there because it's got a bunch of other stuff. So uh, not my settings. You go into settings, then you've got okay. down here at the bottom, uh, spam and, and call screen, as a feature, and so that's where you go, and you can activate that in there. But apparently, I had it activated, so I had it on. So I don't know why I'm seeing uh, spam calls. Do you, you know what? Do you it's want me less to call you and calls? offer you insurance? <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing. Just do it. <laughs> Do it. I'm seeing less spam calls. I'm seeing a lot of spam text messages, like tons of them suddenly. So I don't know. They get you any way they can. Um, yeah. So there was that uh, with Facebook. I mean, it's just a lot, a lot of people's information. But you're right. I mean, at this point, it, at this point, I feel like I see this story a million times every single month. It, like at a, at a certain point, I just kind of get desensitized to it. And it's like, okay, well, it's data. It's already out there. When yeah. I go to have I been pwned .com, you know, there's like 10 different things that I've been pwned. Yes. Um, but, I, but it goes back to like 2007 for me. It lists them all. So you think, oh, oh my God, I, I went and did it again. And it's, you know, all again. Yeah. Yeah. I did not find my information in the, in the, uh, they have updated. I, uh, have I been pwned .com, by the way, with the information from the Facebook dump. And, uh, I did not find my information in there. At least you can put in your phone number. No, I didn't either. A part of that, Mark Zuckerberg. But I mean, there there that. is a security element to that too. I I would imagine, like for like two factor authentication that uses a, a phone, um, that could be a vector for someone who really wants to take advantage of some of the phone numbers they find in there. It couldn't just. It could also not just be locked into like spam calls. It could be people who kind of use it on a deeper level, you know, to do two factor, but. How likely is that to happen to everybody? I don't know. Yeah. Things to fear, I guess. Um, how about so the other story? I didn't want to. I didn't want to delve into. You made it green. What I'm just going <laughs> to ask here is the Amazon urination story. Okay, we don't need to. Well, no, no. Uh, I have a question. I have a question. Just, just I presume it's green that doesn't mean it has to be talked about. No, but I, I presume that in a time of COVID and every restaurant and every store and everybody closes all their restrooms. Yeah. I just presumed that part of the problem was if you're driving all day for Amazon, how do you? Uh, and okay. is that a factor in this story or do we not care? Well, I mean, the issue was. A it lied. That was an issue. 
Well, uh, I'm just thinking about the fact that drivers have to pee in bottles. Part of it was their quotas didn't allow for time for biological functions, right? You just had to make right. these package deliveries. And then the secondary issue was where can they go to do it? Right. And this is something the UPS people and everybody, I mean, this is not right. just It's Iceland. not just Amazon, yeah. It's everybody yeah. right now. It's got to be tough out there. Well, even before, I mean, it's not yeah. like, like if your UPS guy was like, hey, can I use your bathroom? You'd be like, um, no, dude. Hey, hey! Quite frankly, if you're just <laughs> well, an, if you're just an average Aunt Pruitt, uh, sometimes they're not going to let you use the bathroom either because it's, right. people are closing down their bathrooms because there's so much idiocy happening in, inside of bathrooms, destroying them and whatnot. So, yeah, this this isn't really an Amazon yeah. problem. This is just it is what it no, is. I agree. Today, the UPS guy goes to a bookstore and says, "Can I use your bathroom?" In the old days, he would have said, "Sure, dude," but now, no, it's closed to everybody, including staff. I think. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a definite like we're going to talk about infrastructure week. There is a definite public restroom infrastructure shortage here in the U.S. I mean, in like Europe, there's pay toilets. Pissoirs. Japan. We need pissoirs. No. I know it's an awful word. I'm not saying the word. (laughs) (laughs) You almost baited her. Stacy is French. It's okay. (laughs) It's not. I'm not doing it. Um, Anyway. We really do need. This is going to be I this mean, is going to be a challenge. Now we're going to have to find the time we can get Stacy to say pissoir. <laughs> we're going to find a way. We're going to find a reason. No. It's going to happen. <laughs> anyway, we, we really do it's need public bathrooms. Yes, we do. Yeah, and, you know it's 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 interesting. I had not considered that aspect. I had not thought about this story through that lens. Uh, that is a even really think good as point. A parent, Where do you I go? Mean, remember, like. Right. I mean, I did, like, I bullied somebody here very recently, letting my daughter in to use the bathroom, even though she's 14 and really should know how to go to the bathroom before we leave the house. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going like, to ask you're you anymore. Adult. You're 14. I used to ask you. And yeah. You got mad at me when I asked you, so I'm not going to ask you anymore. It's your responsibility. But, I, yeah, I if you have young all. children, I mean, yeah. where, what yeah. do you do with them? Yeah. yeah. Carry around so Amazon screw, Amazon screws up so much, right? They screwed up. They lied about it. That was stupid. They could have said, "Hey, the conversation we just had," but yeah. they get back. Then, then there's. The, I read a story about the um, the union and they and the union. Fine, unionize them. Just let it happen. It's going to happen anyway. Um, but that process is going to drag on forever now. Yeah, probably so. I mean, there's just a, a wide kind of unionization uh, thing happening uh, with with big tech right now. So I know Leo has mentioned, you know, in in recent weeks, like these stories are less technology and more more labor, you know, labor social laws and and, and stuff. And so maybe less less appropriate or, or less necessary to be discussed on the shows. I, I did not. I I will say though that I did not care for for Amazon's response. That that tweeted yeah, response really put a sour taste in my mouth, and I was just like, oh come on! Like what? I can understand not not agreeing, but it was such a pissy tone. It was like you don't need to do that. Oh, did you company. have to say that that way, Jason? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Jason, wow, <laughs> another you really say that, Jason. <laughs> A p- such a shot. pissoir tone. <laughs> That's that better. better. <laughs> okay, good. Um, is that a word but, we can't Jason, say on this show? It probably is. So I, I, think, I think we're headed toward uh, pissoir as, uh, oh, man, sleep me. Okay, I leave that. that, 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 that that's but, a better show title. Yeah, that's a better show but, title. But okay. would you have preferred a standard PR playbook tweet response? I I much I appreciate the fact that it, this was almost human, what they tweeted back. Instead of the, True. yeah, we're taking actions to blah, 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 that every big tech company says straight out of yeah. the PR playbook, page 25. But they lied. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the problem. They lied. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just had I was like, exactly. I was like, so they're instead of taking a page from the PR tra- playbook, they're taking one from like what the Trump administration playbook where you're just oh, like, uh, this burn. is an alternative <laughs> fact. No, right. They lied. There's nothing yeah, to say. That was not cool. Along. Dude, y'all, I am so blurry. What is happening to my camera? I've got the Barbara Bandwidth Walters going. effect. No, I don't know. Bandwidth. No, I I've Could plugged be. in. Okay, sorry. Jason's I'm like crisp. Well, you know. I don't okay. mind being like filmy and soft. <laughs> <laughs> Streisand. You can start singing like Streisand. Exactly. I cannot. I'm toned down. <laughs> 
Um, what about the the ACLU story? That that got a little bit of attention. ACLU uh, was coming under fire. It was revealed last week that it was sharing data with Facebook, which I mean, you know, who isn't? But when it comes down to it, it's ACLU, you know, and they're an organization that kind of makes a you know kind of makes a statement against. I'm guess getting paywalled. What were they sharing and why? Yeah, they're usually for the people, right? Yeah, for the people. So they still were sharing, the context. So this is this is information uh, that was collected when people were visiting the site, when they were silent, signing up with mailing lists, buying something uh, through the ACLU site, uh, making donations, data shared with Facebook, including names, addresses, phone numbers. I mean, but why? I, yeah, well, that's that's a great question. Was actually. it just negligence, or was it was it a re- business reason for them? Or I, I just, think that's what's what I believe that I'm they, trying to remember exactly what it was. They updated their privacy it policy, and then when they updated their privacy policy, they disclosed that it shares data with Facebook um, it, from their website visitors. If you do, join a distribution list, make a purchase, or submit a donation, it includes your name, email address, phone number, and zip codes. So but basically, why you, were they doing that? That's what I'm still trying to understand. Oh, I imagine it's so they could solicit more donations from like minded people also on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what? They probably could build a like this set. For yeah, that would be my. Uh, that's what, what that's probably what it was then. OK, there's probably a mm-hmm. legitimate business reason, but it's <gasps> data and Facebook. You know, right, I just don't want to go right. anywhere near that third rail now. Techno pen. Well, data. I mean, yes, data mm-hmm. and Facebook, but then also kind of like I think I think what captured certain attention about this is that it's ACLU, and this would be the kind of thing that they would, right. in yeah, in totally. other so, cases, kind of turning the table and looking outward, going, "Hey, you shouldn't do I mean, that." Let but, me look it up. Right. Their yeah. statement just <laughs> said, <laughs> "What? What is that book you're reading? Is that moral <laughs> panics?" Uh-huh. I'm, uh, I'm okay. okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, um, and the ACLU, they, they punted on this. Their their statement was, they must often, the ACLU must often work with companies that we are actively challenging to improve their own policies and practices. So basically, okay. yeah, we're using it too. We got to. Yeah. yeah. Um, trying to see what else. Is there anything in here that y'all... Um, um, you can see sure a, we a young about. British person discover the taste of ranch dressing. Oh, no. On line 72, speaking it? of sauces. I was going to say, we got ketchup in here. We've got ranch dressing. <laughs> How did we do this? <laughs> this is uh, just, just Jeff, Jeff is like, can I combine That's, TikTok with I'm being pic- pixie-ish, yes. <laughs> I try to find something on, on TikTok that'll drive Aunt crazy or somebody crazy. You don't no, have to do that. Mission accomplished, sir. You don't have to do that. <laughs> um, Mike Masnick blows a proper gasket over the New York Times in Section 230. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's tell us a little bit about this this Clarence. I mean, I'm assuming this is... Uh, is this oh, in no, that was, there was the Clarence... Clarence Tom- Tom- oh, this is separate. There was the Clarence Thomas oh, 230 okay. where he screwed it up and he got it all wrong. But that's just Clarence Thomas... And then Masnick, the New York Times has been messing up on 230 again and again and again and again. And Masnick, God bless him, just blew a gasket about it. And he put in every link to every time they've screwed up 230. It's one more columnist getting it wrong. And at this point, I think it's I think it's purposeful. I think they're 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 they've got a campaign against 230 in the internet, and it's driving me nuts. So I, I also just wanted to give Mike a plug because I love when he does that. Yeah, you know, he's so great. he's doing this and and trying to to raise awareness and uh but does the New York Times know because they are repeat offenders of this? Uh, have they been contacted and reached out to him and say, hey, thanks for letting us no, know? No, I mean, they, everybody's so. complained on Twitter again and again and again. All the top experts have complained to the New York Times, and they just ignore it. They Isn't just it ignore it. Mostly they're opinion writers. It's not their actual journalists, right? It is. Ba- is it? Uh, no, they did a huge, well, yes, primarily you're right, but there have been cases. They did a huge package. They defined 230 wrong. They had to correct it like in hours, and it, and it took away the whole package. They have messed up again and again. It drives the law people I know just completely berserk. Hmm. That is so hmm. weird. I th- well, I, my, I'm, this is where I'm going to go to. <laughs> okay. Back to the more I think that they're, uh, um, I, I think it's becoming purposeful. I think that they're, they're, yeah, they're right. aiming driving clicks this way, right? Is it, is it a That's way of part of it, clicks? but also they're, they're trying to disadvantage their internet competitors. Uh 
That I'm feels like, pretty like uh, conspiracy oriented. Uh, uh, really? I mean, that's you're basically uh, accusing a newspaper of lying to people, like destroying its journalism to further its own well, business model. Is that really uh, what? You why else have they gotten it wrong this many times? Completely, I mean, absolutely, people, utterly, simply wrong. People are kind of not smart sometimes. The New York Effing Times. The New York Effing Times. Were, like, let me tell you how many times I read stuff in the New York Effing Times, and I'm like, are you really a tech reporter? That is not how physics Yeah, work. I know. Yeah. Hmm. So, so again, I mean, th- still this is people. when you ask, where are the editors and who's above the editors right. that are allowing this to yep. continue to yep. go out? Right. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Oh, well. All right. Thank you for that. And yeah, shout out to that. Mr. Masnick. Yeah, that's what I love. Yeah, he's awesome. I, I love his He work. is. He is the best. He's super busy. I've, I've tried, uh, I've, I've asked him to come on to Twig or Twit. He's just been so busy lately. And and he has been. I mean, he's... He's, he's defending the entire internet yeah, as we exactly. know it, man. He's holding it all up exactly. on his own. So we got to give him the space <laughs> to work. and Jeff Kossoff are it. They're our only defense... <laughs> Uh, why don't we uh, why don't we sound the horns? Let's do the change log. I think we're there. Let's do Woo. it. Oh, he got the Google change log. Oh yeah. What All instrument right. do you play, so, Jason? Do you don't you play a, don't you play a brass instrument yourself? Oh boy, when I was younger, I played the trombone. I don't. I, don't oh, I see. I think you ought to have a spare trombone there, just at the ready as a backup. <laughs> And do the oh yeah, that exactly. would be so do great that yeah. would be so great I don't know where I'd fit it I'm literally squashed <laughs> in the corner of my bedroom <laughs> you'd, you'd smash the camera out of the way we need that wide shot of Mr. Oh, Howell's yeah. studio set right now it's, it's beautiful <laughs> oh it's it's a corner it's literally a corner I have to crawl under the desk I, every time I've I seen into you climb into that set a couple of times in the past it's hilarious man yeah hey <laughs> we make do with what we have uh this is this was the best solution that I could come up with when the pandemic happened so and it's you are not putting right your you. studio in the living room I don't care mm-hmm. if this is how we make a living no you are not putting all this crap in the living room well it wasn't no. even that we have a den we actually have a den downstairs the problem is the den has no door to close it off from the kitchen and from uh. the living room so I have a space it's just the kids are going to be doing their school. You know, my wife works out of the house as well. This was the only way that I could like close a door and know that I wasn't going to disrupt everything and vice versa. So, anyway, it's worked out. Take my space. <laughs> it's worked out all right. So, what's going on here? Well, let's see here. We've got the Pixel Five getting an update at the April uh, 2021 update, which I'm hearing at least on on uh, Twitter a lot of people saying. They're seeing some improvements. There's a there's a GPU performance gain uh, as part of this update. So if you've got a Pixel 5, you definitely want the April 2021 uh, update. You might actually see some uh, speed improvements on certain aspects. Your phone of the becomes phone. less meh. Yeah, yeah, more. Eh. And probably a little bit of a be- <laughs> battery bump too, right? <laughs> probably so. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, there's there's a few other um, improvements here. Camera quality. Um, and how that re- uh, translates into third-party apps, game performance. It sounds like a pretty a pretty decent upgrade uh, for the Pixel 5. Uh, so make sure that when you see that April update, if you have it, make sure and let it go through. And uh, you'll be happy that you did. Also, uh, Android 12 developer preview 2.2. There's been a couple of updates, actually, of the developer preview. Um, the second one, they had one that went through like a... Like a it's like they they did the developer preview too, and then they did an uh, an update like a week ago, and now they have another one with more security patch and bug fixes. So I don't know what's going on there. Probably doesn't apply to most people watching and listening to this show because it's uh, the developer preview. I don't know. I, I'm pretty positive no one on this panel is is updating uh, to the dev preview at this point. I'm I'm not nope. even doing it right now. So you're not um, you the god of Android, is it? I well I have it on yeah, a separate phone. So why, often. Yeah. So often I would actually just put it on my my daily driver because I want to know. But um, this time I chose to put it on a, a separate phone. I'm going to wait until Plus. the actual beta. If it's the developer. I was, preview, I was there the day wow. that you locked your phone. 
I was there for that famous day. <laughs> I got to be careful now. So. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> is, is Mr. Howell just getting older or is he getting older and wiser with all of this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely getting older. It may be seen if I'm getting wiser. Uh, Google is you bringing support for the Rust programming language, which this was a store, one of those stories. I was like, okay, I'll take your word for it. I don't necessarily understand it. When I read into it further, it's essentially, um, there are different ways to develop for Android. Uh, if you want to de develop for the OS itself and not necessarily apps, if you're doing apps, you might use something like Kotlin. If you're developing for the OS itself, you might use C or C++. Um, Rust is another way to develop for the operating system itself, and it actually uh, addresses memory uh, safety better than C and C++ do. So if you're a developer, that probably makes a heck of a lot more sense to you than it does to me. Uh, Google's apparently been working on this integration for the last 18 months. Um, so there you go. They'll be, they'll be talking about it at virtual I.O. Did you hear about That's, Rust? Yeah, maybe they will. They sure will. Oh, they let's sure have a session will. about Rust. Yes, right. A couple of years ago, we had the Kotlin announcement and everyone in the audience went nuts for it. So yeah. I wonder if Rust would get the same. Well, that's because it's new, but Rust is not a new programming language. Kotlin was new. Yeah. Um, people were very excited about Kotlin. Yeah. People, if, it's like a, I feel like Rust is, I feel like it's been around for like a decade, y'all. It's been a while. Okay, well, sorry. Uh, late to the party, but... At least came to the party. <laughs> um, Google Play Music has one final update that lets you hide the app on your phone. And I'm guessing, I didn't get to read through this, but I'm guessing some phones might have Google Play Music kind of installed and it's still there, even though if you yep. launch it, like yep. you can't get it to run anymore. And this final update will... Uh, will so I called this app aside. Yeah. The update that kills the app. It's, it's like the, re <laughs> well, rever it's yeah. the reverse of recursion. <laughs> That's actually kind of nice that they're thinking about that for people like me who like want everything on their screen to be like I uniform want to be used. No, I just want it to be like, there's no room in my life for like non-essential stuff. You just got to get rid of it. So, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you. Well, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you on that. Definitely. Why, why have an app icon in your, in your tray that literally does nothing when it, when it's yeah. done, it's done. Let me, let me remove it, please. Absolutely agree. Um, we were talking about the Pixel Buds earlier, and um, I think last week Leo may have mentioned in the mm -hmm. change log that there was a possibility of a Pixel Buds A coming somewhere down the pipeline. Uh, and apparently there was a an email sent out. Um, I don't know who it was sent out to exactly. Oh, it was the Google Nest mailing list. And anyways, in that email, it shows the whole family of Google devices and under accessories or above accessories is a version of the Pixel Buds that have like a like a greenish, a quiet, a, like a mint color to them. And we haven't seen that yet. That's a, that that's takes a version of really the, knows their Google stuff to notice that. Because it's yeah, barely totally. green. Totally. Um, but it's not, it's definitely not white either. They, they, like the buds themselves are green. And the buds usually I have are one white, question. So. What do that? they work? <laughs> that's a good. That's a good question. I well, can't answer that. None of the time certain. they work half the time, so there uh, is an improvement. Yeah. If I turn my head, you know what drove me nuts about it? I could never find a pattern. Oh, it's when I turn my head this way oh, and yeah. do that. No, it's when I yeah. do that. No, my hand is here. No, my hand is there. There was no pattern. To it. Oh, it's when I'm facing east. It's when I'm facing west. No, no way could I find out when the damn things wouldn't work. They just often yeah. wouldn't work. Uh, He's doing yep. the hokey pokey while he turned himself around. Uh. <laughs> and why did it happen only outside? It basically didn't happen inside. It happened outside. Why? Air? It made no sense. None. No walls. No walls for oh. it to bounce off of? I, I, I don't know. know. Oh, that is knows. nuts. But you're not alone. They are they are very glitchy. That's a, yeah. And it's disappointing because I really like them for oh, the, love the totally hands-free uh, assistant. Yep. Or going on runs or whatever when I don't yeah. want to like have the interact with my phone or whatever. It was awesome. I could just say skip forward 30 seconds or skip forward two minutes. And yeah, it was awesome. That's pretty cool. But pretty glitchy, so there's that too. 
Um, Google Workspace users um, are going to get some extra time to create unlimited docs. They're going to get until next year. Apparently, this was an extension that Google had initially set uh, for you know docs, sheets, slides, other workspace files to not count against storage caps. I think because of the pandemic back in November, they announced this. It was going to go through June 1st, but now we're getting an extension to go into 2022. So... You get more free doc files that uh, don't count against your storage space. Are they free sense. forever or come next year they start charging you for all this stuff? That's a good question. If you create a bunch of these docs and then, yeah, that's a good question. I wonder. Um, delay the count. I'm, man, I'm, I mean, I'm guessing that it's, uh, that it's free forever, but well, why would it, it be? It I should guess, be. It should be, but usually the, whatever you have in your drive counts against your storage quota. Well, right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know the answer on that one. Mm, okay. Um, of course, Google storage is very cheap. You yes, know, it's like it a, is. Like, you know, I'm not going to complain. I'll complain. I have other things to complain about. That's not my <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> your earbuds and my status as a... Workspaces customer in other areas. I'll complain about yes. that. I won't complain about yes. That. that will never go away. That will <laughs> A few docs be. here or there are going to kill me. <laughs> um, Google is opening up Android Auto to, uh, to I, I think, third-party navigation options, parking, charging apps, just more integration with apps, in other words. Uh, Android Auto for quite a while has been in some ways kind of locked down to Google's own apps uh, for certain things like navigation and and ways, I think, eventually. And now they're opening it up even further. So that's good if you uh, use Android Auto. I don't really use Android Auto very much. Maybe I should, but I don't. I do. It's all I use. Um, I don't drive anymore, so. Well, I was going to yeah, say, you're exactly. not going anywhere, Mr. Howell. <laughs> so what's the point? <laughs> that's true. That's true. Going more places now. It's opening up. Maybe I should use it again. Uh, and then finally, and I think you... Uh, so you put I put this, this one in there. Job. I'm very yeah. excited about one feature. Very excited. This so I've talked Chrome. in the past. This is this is a new Chrome OS update. And um, a few things in it. One is I've long since wanted multiple cut and paste. Like when I'm doing the rundown, I got to cut and paste once for the URL, cut and paste once for the headline, cut and paste once, cut and paste once. Now when you cut and paste into Chrome OS, it displays the last five things you've saved into memory. So oh, you can, okay. Isn't that there's nice? A, I used some to have a separate app for that. that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. I used to have, we used to call it save get keys in my prehistoric days of, of newsroom systems. So now you can put the URL in and then you put the headline in and it's going to, it's going to save Jason Howell immense amounts of work. I'm very happy with that. That's a good <laughs> one. That's uh, the other one that's good is they've improved the screen grab piece. So now when you mark something, it suddenly says, do you want to save this? And you can change the shape of it. You can do all kinds of things to it and do other stuff too. So that's good. Um, it, uh, it says it directly controls your Android phone, but it won't let me do that because apparently I'm a Google Workspaces person. <laughs> 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 um, Wi-Fi works better. Powerful screen capture tools. We did that one already. Uh, then keep critical files at your fingertips. Now on the bottom of the screen, it'll give you three little um, icons for the last three files you did something to right there. Now, um, uh, Stacy's uh, erstwhile partner in all thing, other things podcast did a whole piece about how to get rid of that. But evidently you can only get rid of it, Kevin said, for... Uh, a while because then it's going to come and be there permanently and it's irritating people because it changes their their tra tray. Uh, but you can keep hmm. critical files at your fingertips. Um, it, more about an uh, assistant, who cares? Uh, the desks, uh, supposedly that's easier. I don't really use the desks. Uh, personalize your lock screen, who cares? Easy access to your media controls, I don't care. That's it. But there's a lot of changes in Chrome OS. That was a lot. Hmm. That is that's a, Chrome, a substantial update. It's for the Sorry 10th to sound birthday. Like Chrome. a productivity OS. Yes, yes. It's. A, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, folks. Follow. It's the getting light. there. Follow <laughs> the light, children. Yeah, you have it, Mr. Jarvis. The light, children. 
we've been relying on uh, Chrome OS largely in in our house the, the past year just for you know the right. school, school school and everything. Yeah. But the Chromebooks that we have have come in very handy. Oh yeah. Um, although I have yeah. I have one one criticism that keeps cropping up, and that's that. Uh, this has to do with family, uh, family controls, basically like family time controls. Uh, what do they call it? Family link is that. So each, each of my daughters has a Chromebook that they use for school and we have the Chromebook. So, you know, they, they also get iPads from the schools, but most of the time they end up using their Chromebook instead. Ha! Um, ha! iPads, how old fashioned. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're nice. You know, they've got a keyboard attachment. It's just, they, they prefer the Chromebooks and I'm proud. Um, however, they also have through Family Link their own tablet, right? They're they're like personal tablets, and of course, if they had it their way, they'd be on their tablets twenty four seven. I ramp that down. You know, my wife and I control that, of course. But the problem is in Family Link, there is no way to to, to tell Family Link uh, school laptop as much time as they need to do their schoolwork. Oh, personal tablet, just the amount of time that I want to give them. So oh, if I hmm. So if I set it for an hour, let's say, because they only get an hour of tablet time a day, then they're in the middle of a Zoom meeting on their on their Chromebook, and an hour Oops. in, it kicks them out, it locks it out, and I have to unlock it, and there's no easy <laughs> what, way to do it. What router do you use? Because you could also control that, like most internet routing oh. software, you can actually yeah. do it by device. So you could... Yep create a profile for your daughters, put their devices oh, that are their tablets under idea. that. Idea. That's a good it's idea. It's probably something it's... built into your Sonic mobile app. Don't oh, wait, do you have... Well, yeah, no, I'm, I'm on Comcast routers? now. Comcast oh, Business. Oh, so they do that. But, so Comcast under Xfinity Wi-Fi, if you pay for that yep. and you're using their Wi-Fi, they let you create a family profile. It's called XFi. Yep. I've, okay. I, I've, I've seen it in my app. And, and their, their, their app is actually quite good. Like that. Oh, okay. So, so it, it's Comcast Business, not Comcast Xfinity. So we don't have that. Oh, However, business. I do have the Eero. And the Eero oh, is... It, okay, oh, that you can totally you do it. Totally have it. Yeah, that <laughs> okay, would totally yeah. have it. Do you, do you know how to do that? Because I can tell you. If you I'm know. sure it's... I, I mean, I off the top of my head, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's in the settings and probably pretty easy. I you never to thought the, to yeah. go that route. <laughs> I wanted the, to stay with the Google. Go to the plus <laughs> and add a profile, and then that's how you're going to do it. Perfect. That's great. And then I would just add it for the tablets specifically. I would create whatever for your girls, because if you create a profile for each of them and then yeah. add the device, because like, I don't know if they have phones or if you want them not to have access to other, and then you could just swap things out based on how you feel about right. their access yeah. to things. That's a good tip. Why didn't I think of that? And of course, I'm, we're, we're coming up with this right now as they're on their last couple of days of spring break. And then they actually return to in-person school here in a couple of days. That's so it's okay. like we you figured can, it out. Yeah. Right you can still do it for grounding because like with the Eero, because That's it's true. tied into Amazon Echo, you can always just yeah. say, turn off so-and-so's, you know, Jane's profile. Oh, that's And then smart. boom, it just shuts everything down. Wow. You're tough. Okay. You're a tough mom. I know. Don't mess with Stacy. Wow. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. For I'm that. so excited. I could help you, Jason. I know. It's awesome. That's a, that's a you help me tip. all the time. Okay. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, that, that was a little bonus to the Google change log. All right. We're going to round things out here. We got tips, tricks, uh, and Tricks. numbers and uh, any other stories that we may have missed coming up next. All right. So is there anything in the rundown that we have not talked about that you really want to get in there? I see Will I Am is there. I That's see kind of interesting. I got into a little bit of a Twitter. Somebody was, was, was yelling about this being awful about the state of the world. But what is it's it? It's kind of neat. What, what's oh, got the air purifiers? Mask? It's a mask. Air Here, purifiers. why don't I put it as my thing? Which okay, line fine. are you on? Well, this looks like it's 115. Is Because uh, we can say that fine. since Mr. Laporte isn't here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's your, it's your so, thing, Stacy. So you want to do it's this as your thing. It's my thing. That's, <laughs> all right, it's your thing. Do. do what you want to do, Stacy. All right, so how about, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about this, Stacy. 
Okay, this is this is not a thing I can show you on my face, although I really wish I could. Uh, <laughs> Will I am teamed up with Honeywell to create the Zuper mask, which is a $299 face mask. It's got a silicone over top thing. It's got mesh underneath that can, I think, be customized, but we're not 100% sure. And it's got Bluetooth with noise canceling headphones that are also linked to this mask and the Honeywell filters. Um, to be clear, the Honeywell filters do not, Honeywell is not saying that they do filter out the coronavirus. They're just saying they're HEPA filters, which I'm oh. cool with pollen season. You know, great. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure it does something. You know, well, it does as much mask. as a cloth filter. As, as a cloth well, it probably thing, does right? more. It probably does more than a cloth mask. Cloth mask. But okay. Sure is more than like this thing right here. <laughs> sure yeah. is more than that. Yeah, right? probably a little more than that. Maybe. So, maybe yeah, and this bit. is a prototype. They're going to do drops just like they do with fancy sneakers. Um, at, I So at first I was like, Okay, and it Whoa. looks freaking dystopian as heck. heck. It does. Yeah. I mean, this it looks like Mad wow. Max meets Adidas. Um, but <laughs> it's like a Google Daydream viewer, but for your mouth, for your mouth, yeah. <laughs> yes. and nose. <laughs> right. um, but I was thinking about this, and I'm like, you know what? If we go into a culture where we wear masks all the time, the fact that it's got the earbuds, it's got an integrated microphone in there. So you could like, and I'm thinking maybe not for like walking around the grocery store, but what if you're sitting in your office, you know, and you've got to wear your mask all day? Yeah. This actually mm -hmm. doesn't. This is I wouldn't mind the ventilation. Hmm. So I, I'm just throwing that out there. Is it, do I think it's going to be, I mean, I would not wear it, but it's not as crazy as it seems. Although Why I wish Will I Am it? would focus on Wink. That's all. Why, why uh, wouldn't you wear it? Why wouldn't I wear it? Right. Because I think it is hideously ugly and also, yeah, mostly because I think I don't want that. That looks like something's attacking your face. It just, <laughs> okay. maybe it's comfortable. And if it is, I might change my mind. It's also okay. It has a, definitely has a gamer aesthetic to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely yeah. aesthetic. It feels like to me. Yeah. But maybe, maybe like, this you is, could make that all black. You could get. That'd like, be better. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, but, get different colorways. Um, yeah, like maybe maybe you go to the game tournaments of the future, and everybody in the in the room is wearing one of these while they're playing whatever it is they're playing. I don't know. <laughs> it looks very futuristic, and three hundred dollars, right? Is that is that the cost for this? Yeah, but I, I mean, like if the headphones are good, I just spent what yeah. almost two hundred dollars on the Jabra's eighty five. Were they were they two hundred? Totally. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, if I hadn't spent that or if these, like, if I could get that kind of mask with the Jabra sound to it mm -hmm. and it wasn't as scary looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got LED lights. Noise well, yeah, that's, why does it do the LED lights? That's the, that's the thing that goes too far. I don't, it doesn't need LED. No, I walk around in the dark all the time. I actually really? have the most stupid, <laughs> crazy LED stuff now. It is beyond silly. That sounds um, so bizarre. Well, there's no street lights where I am. And when it gets dark at like four o'clock in the winter. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I, yeah, well, I, wear, I thought I you were saying you're walking around the house in the dark. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, I've got like rave wear. Like I have this like, it's like literally an LED vest. It's got LED lights here. It's got them up and down my back. It, and it, it, I can program it with an app to do patterns. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> oh, man. We well, need actually, Stacey, would you send that to me? <laughs> Do you want one? I can send I, I, you a link to it. Yes, I mean, send me the link, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's great. People definitely. Because I go out at night, too. And I'm in the country, too. Yeah. Let me let me find out. Let me go find out Thanks. where Add I am. Add me to that list, too, please. All right. I'll think, oh, uh, Stacey's just being super helpful today. <laughs> All kinds of good tips. Yeah, what's going on? Jeez. <laughs> Stacey, you're usually so cranky. <laughs> This is good. Uh, robot in, in chat brings up the question: How do you how do you clean these masks that are so teched oh, out? Oh, with like all this? the electronics. Oh, that's where yeah. you get those fancy UV light things. That oh, yes, we'll get those. I don't know. I'm just. Okay. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I have to clean my um, CPAP thing with ozone. Huh. Ooh. Okay. Um. That's funny. You, well, that you mentioned CPAP. I, I saw the other day a CPAP that only connects. It's like the little thing that connects just it's to your BS. nose. 
It's is BS. it totally well, BS? I wondered if BS. it was. I was like, how could you replace like this huge CPAP thing right. that is just the way it is right now with this thing that you? I got tempted because I hated my my CPAP thing. I despised it. And 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 there was yeah. a a Kickstarter campaign to actually do that. It had many fans, and 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 they had a whole thing, and they they raised I don't know a million and a half, and never did a, a thing. It's one of the big ones uh, that never okay. happened because they can't. Uh, so what happened was people copied the design, the look of it. And all it does is like have a, a, a flap in it or something. It doesn't really do anything. Uh, okay. Well, I just, yeah. I imagined like something that small wouldn't have enough air pressure to actually open up. Well, you don't need a lot of pressure. You just need kind of a constant flow. Oh, okay. And so right. this, 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 this Kickstarter thing had these small baffles with a tiny battery that would create some flow up your nose um, and, and keep you breathing. But, Ugh. CPAPs are no fun. I am oh. I am man sleeping myself. Man sleeping. <laughs> what is it? I forgot about that terminology. Show title. That's a nice callback to the beginning of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Completely spaced that one. Um, well, Jeff, what uh, what's what's so your I'm gonna give you two or your stuff or what you got? Two. Um, first, first, the serious one is. Um, the uh, Andreessen Horowitz marketplace ratings. I did this a year ago. This is the second year they've done this. And if you go and open that up and then you go to the bottom of the top, whatever number it is and say more, it'll go to the full list. And, and what fascinated me last year was how, these are the top marketplaces out there, how few of them I know and use. Maybe I'm just so incredibly unhip. Instacart, I use constantly for my my, my father to, to do things for him. Um, wow. I lose out pretty quickly in this list. Masterclass yeah, I've heard of, but I've never Sinky. heard of Valve. Valve is good. The, the internet game? The, yeah. Not like, yeah, they're it's, oh, game, okay. it's a game thing. These are the market. Yeah. These are top marketplaces. Most of these are huge, and I have never heard of them. There's a whole world out there is what I'm saying. Goat streetwear. I don't think you can see me in streetwear. I don't think it worked very well. Um, Vato made the list. Interesting. Vato does uh, a lot of stock footage and stock uh, stock assets for content creators. Is that what it is? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of education ones here. Uh, Course Hero, uh, Udemy, um, Coursera. That's I got those. Uh, Delivery Dudes, never heard of that. Modzi wow. Home Services, Cameo, oh, and Vato. Modzi was one of my nuts. things. Was it? Oh, yeah. It's a that? designer. It's a design thing. Oh, ah, see, you're hipper than I am. So I just, I just oh, thought I this list that. was interesting. Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bandcamp is on there. Love Bandcamp. That's how. Oh yeah. The other yeah. one to do. I love this. There's a video to play on line 135. If you would have the honors, one of you. Let's see here. Well, I just I love have this. No, that would be John. Mr. Jammer B has it. Mr. Jammer B, can you can you pull up 135 and play that? Let's see here. Audio, restart with audio. It's only audio. That might be a problem. Second. That might be a problem. <laughs> there we go. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, go back to the beginning. Okay, ready. <laughs> Somebody had a sense of humor here at Lufthansa because it's flight 22222 to loose. I just love that. I just love that. <laughs> like to lose. That that kind of sounds like a a, a remix <laughs> just waiting to happen. To, yeah, to, isn't to, that great? To, to, to lose. Yeah, something along those lines. Oh, Love funny. it. And that's Jeff funny. and Ant, I put the link in the chat for the best. Oh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Oh no, uh, which chat? The Zoom chat? Uh, the, no, the. Oh no, not the Zoom. I don't chat. see it there. I, Hold up. I, I put it in the Twitch chat, but here I can put it in the Zoom chat too. Okay. I share with everybody. I don't just share with y'all. Oh, I thought. Oh, I the, oh no, the Twitch chat. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Okay. The Twitch chat, not the, the not the rundown chat. Never mind. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> oh my. All right. Let's see here. So, Ant, what you got? Um, I have a couple things, and the first thing I I like to tell people to if you can avoid it stop taking painkillers. I know people have aches and pains, but um, 
painkillers can can be quite addictive and lead to a whole host of problems. And uh, I had my hip replaced several years ago and and battled with pain management and things like that. But I found a couple of different ways to try to manage pain. And this here is something that I got my hands on fairly recently. I was hoping I could do a review about it, but I figured, you know what, I can at least give them a shout out. And it's the Loomer Care Duo. Um, I have it here in this in my studio. This is a really nice device, um, and it uses lasers to help manage pain. I talked about this on my previous show, Hands On Wellness, being able to use lasers and other types of pain management devices to actually, you know, activate the nerves and the proteins and cells inside of your body to help manage pain, to keep you from just popping pills, because all those pills are doing mm-hmm. is just tricking your brain. They're not healing anything, um, and they're just giving you more of an addiction uh, opportunity. But this thing is pretty intuitive, um, works for, for muscles and skin and joint pain. It's got three different settings here. You just toggle through, and you can do treatments five minutes at a time. It's not something that you do you know, for 20 minutes, half an hour, anything like that. Just do this a couple times a day. Um, I've tried it out because I battle with the wrist and forearm issues because I do a lot of push-ups and I carry cameras all day and eventually my grip gets weak. And I found that just playing with this for the last several weeks does make a difference and then you can see it automatically shuts off if it's idle. So yeah, this this is this is a pretty slick device. So shout out to LumaCare for again trying to get people to stop <laughs> taking so many daggum pain pills and allowing these pharmaceutical companies to just consider, continue to profit off of us and turn us into uh, low end drug users. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, my well, secondly, my other picks are go watch my show, Hands On Photography, twit.tv slash hop. It's been a lot of fun. Had a couple of interviews. I have another interview coming up really soon that I, I can't wait <laughs> for y'all to, to check it out. Uh, but my last one, I talked with Mr. Freddie Clark about food photography and beverage photography. And this man just does some amazing work. And a lot of it is just based on lighting and just how you set up your lights. And I'm still not quite there yet, but I'm getting close. I'm going to figure out one of these days. And uh, also in that episode, we alluded to a workshop that I've been invited to, and that is the Wanderers Photo Excursion, and that's wanderersphoto.com. Myself, Mr. Andrew Scrivani, Mr. Steve Brazel, Mr. Freddie Clark, we are all going to be your instructors for this workshop in New Orleans. I will be focusing more on street photography as well as cityscapes. And part of the street photography uh, we have a second line band in New Orleans that's going to be there and allow us to to do a shoot of them as they march through the streets of New Orleans, just doing their thing with their instruments. And that's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of energy to capture through your lens. And I can't wait. That's in October. So go ahead and get yourself registered and, and uh, join this workshop. That's amazing. What a great opportunity. That sounds like <laughs> a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait. Yeah, I bet. Um, and uh, when did you say that was again? That's in October. I believe it's October, October the 12th. I cannot remember. <laughs> it's October, October 10th through 14th. That's it. Still, 14, I was just thinking 14. like, that's, 14. that's going to be nice for you. I imagine <laughs> to be able to, you know, go to new Orleans after, after the year that we've had and yeah, kind of feel yes, feel like yes, a normal traveler yes. again, <laughs> right? And then just the street photography because I love street photography. That's that's probably my favorite thing to shoot beyond just um, studio portraits because street photography allows you to to take a scene that's totally innocuous and paint a story. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, one of my favorite all time shots is uh, is of this lady that I took a photo of in Charlotte several years ago. And it's in black and white, and she's just standing there out outside of the train station, and she has her baby in this little carrier. Um, and she's just sort of hanging out, and the baby is just totally napping. Just <laughs> It's just, just 
such a peaceful scene. The baby's like, you know what? I'm outside. The sun's shining on me. I'm going to catch me a real good nap right now with my mom. You know, <laughs> just I, I love that shot, and I just love being able to see stuff like that out in everyday life with street photography. You know, this, that's the kind of stuff you can't just just stage. You know, so yeah, it's going to yeah, be fun in New Orleans. Uh, right on. Never been to New Orleans. One of these days, I've always wanted to what? go. What? No. Well. Me neither. This will be my first time down there. Huh. Yeah. All right. Well, food, have fun, y'all. Food. <laughs> Eat and yeah, drink and be merry. I plan yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. I plan on it. Awesome. Look forward to that. Um, so my thing, actually, uh, the initial embargo on this lifted this morning, and it is... A wearable. It is a the OnePlus Ooh. watch, Ooh. which uh, OnePlus. You know they they announced the nine and the nine Pro, the OnePlus nine and the OnePlus nine Pro uh, weeks ago. At that same announcement, they also announced the OnePlus watch, but they you know they hadn't sent it out. They they weren't ready to kind of like take the you know go go completely uh, to the point of putting it in people's well putting it on people's arms uh, yet. And uh, this morning, so the, basically the embargo today is basically just showing that it exists and talking a little bit about the hardware. I've been using it for a few days, but I can't really talk about the experience necessarily, but I can kind of show it off because um, as you can see, it's a little like it's it's definitely a large watch. Th uh, thickness wise, though, I'm trying to my camera's a little far away, so it's kind of hard to hold for you. No, guys. it's working. Uh, Thickness, thickness wise, it's not like a crazy thick smartwatch uh, compared to some of them that I've had on my wrist before, but you can see just like the, the size of it. It's a pretty large and wide, uh, smartwatch. So, uh, 46 millimeter, uh, stainless steel oh, casing, oh, cur that's what curved I want. glass on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah, it's a nice profile, I have to say. But I but I think it's probably going to be for certain, you know, size wrists essentially. Uh, it's not going to work for every wrist. Um, uh, one gig of RAM, uh, four gigs of storage. Two of those four gigs are accessible for things like music and stuff. You can move music onto here and then you know connect a Bluetooth uh, a Bluetooth headphone uh, directly to it. And so you can stream your music and leave your phone at home when you go for a run, that sort of thing. Uh, 402 milliamp hour battery it does have a charging puck. So you just drop it right on the, the charging puck and, you know, it starts charging. Um, and IP68. Uh, so that's Ooh. water and dust resistance. So it's a pretty, you know, this is really there. It seems like they're targeting this for. Um, for active for active people, so you know there's more than 110 different workout types that you can uh, that you can support with this uh, different modes for tracking different types of workouts and you know run, your your running pace and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know maybe you're in the gym or or maybe you play play cricket. I noticed that cricket is a setting. So if you play cricket, <laughs> you're 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 solid here. GPS. It uh, does blood oxygen uh, saturation monitoring, stress detection, breathing training, uh, rapid heart rate alerts. It does the thing where, um, you know, after an hour, it tells you to get up and walk around. So you got that as well. Uh, $159. Yes. So it's not. That price is what gets me. That's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that is. Well, that is a night. That's a lot of good features for that price. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, OnePlus has long been the value brand. There's a lot of people wondering if maybe that value brand identity is uh, is on the way out with their phones, you know, because their phones keep getting more and more expensive. But yeah. definitely it seems like with the with the wearable at that price, $159, they offer a lot um, within this uh, smartwatch. So uh, These available, are available for, now, sir, with no wear OS. Right. They, yeah, I believe they announced, um, no wear OS. This, this is running Android, but they're not officially, you know, it's not officially running wear OS, Google's wear oh, OS. Okay. Oh, I see. Um, so it is Android OS. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, available for purchase April 14th. So I have obviously have the screen set. Oh yeah. See, I've got my music and I could stream that through to my, my headphones. But, and it looks snappy um, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice. I gotta say, it's a it's a sharp looking design. It's um, not bad, and especially for one hundred fifty nine dollars. So I'm gonna be doing a full review of this for Hands On Tech next week. Uh, is is my hope? 
Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess That's uh, what we stay call tuned. A tease. More, more coming on this at some point next week, but uh, you can you can purchase it yourself uh, April fourteenth if you want to get in on it. That's exactly a, a month uh, or sorry, a week away from today. So, uh, yeah, the One Plus Watch. There you are, one fifty nine dollars. Not a bad price. All right. And that's uh, that's what I got, and I think that's what we got. I think we're at the end of this Good episode work. of This Week in Google. Always a lot of fun. Thank you, uh, thank you all for uh, letting me uh, crash the party and and sit in. Always the a pleasure, seat. sir. Always. Always, yes. <laughs> Lovely to have you back. <laughs> thank you, uh, Jeff. What do, what do you want to leave people with? Buzzmachine.com. Anything else? Just beware. Moral beware of the panics. moral panics. And not just one of them. Not a not a moral panic. I'm, I'm, moral I'm researching, so watch out, Stacey. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be full of examples. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, you're doomed. <laughs> doomed. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you, Jeff. Always a lot of fun. And thank uh thank thank you, Stacy. Uh Stacy on IOT.com. Anything else you want to point people to? No, uh the Internet of Things podcast. There we go. Internet of Things podcast. Check it out, everybody. Thank you, Stacy. Good to see you. Thanks for being in such a great mood and lifting all of us up with you. Yeah, thanks for tolerating me in my hyper crazy mood. (laughs) (laughs) It's been great. And thanks to you, and I always enjoy having the opportunity to do a show with you, man. So it's great to have you here. Uh, Twit.tv slash hop. Anything else you want to point people to? Uh, Actually, yeah. Uh, First off, quickly. Stacy, shout out to you for getting Mr. Om Malik on your episode last week for your Stacy on IoT podcast. So, kudos. And you are just like the nicest human being on the face of the planet. Wow. He is indeed. <laughs> yeah. I just, I got to give you, I owe you like a million hugs now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. And also, uh, I want to give a shout out to our online forums, twit.community. There's always a lot of different conversations going on over there. And yeah, they, they, there are different conversations about the each show that we have on the network, but then sometimes it's just some random stuff and, and some nice shout outs to us as hosts. It's, I really enjoy hanging out over there and checking out what people are discussing as twit.community. So if you haven't joined our online forums, go do that. It's, it's, it's quite all right over there. So I'm gonna give them a tip of the hat and a nod. Agreed. Thank you for mentioning that. I, I don't get in there nearly as much as I want to and probably as much as I should. But when I do, it's, it's really great to see people talking about what we're doing and also just talking with each other about. Yeah, it's just random conversations. Like and it's technology. not always nerdy tech stuff. It's, it's just good people hanging out. I, I totally dig that in there. Yep. Completely agree. Awesome stuff. Well, um, as for me, I mean, I'm like uh, like like you saw today, I'm filling in for Leo. Although I think this is my last show filling in for Leo. I did security now yesterday, this week in Google today, tomorrow morning, uh, tech news weekly, along with Micah Sargent. So you can look forward to that and all about Android. And I, they keep me busy around here and, and it's a good thing that they do. Oh uh, yeah. I what I do. So, um, twit.tv slash TWIG. That is the show page on the web for This Week in Google. You can go there, find all the ways to subscribe to uh, this show in audio, video formats. You can jump out to YouTube. There's all the links for the different podcatchers. Uh, so you can jump right into Pocket Cast or wherever you like to get your podcast, Apple Podca- Podcasts. Um, also have uh, you know the live show. If you want to join the folks in the chat room, and uh, watch live and kind of participate behind the scenes and watch it as we're recording it. You can do that. We record live every Wednesday starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, 20, uh, what is it, 20 hundred or 20 o'clock UTC. You tell me. (laughs) I don't know, but I just say both of them. It's kind of like GIF, GIF. As long as they say both, everybody's happy. Uh, But that is it uh, for this episode of This Week in Google. Thank you so much. Leo returns next week, so you'll see him next time on This Week in Google. Take care of everybody. See you later. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that podcast episode. If you would like to check out more about tech news, then you should check out Tech News Weekly with me, Micah Sargent, my co-host, Jason Howell, where we interview the people making and breaking the tech news every week. <laughs>